Hello guys, welcome to my chan as you can see in the picture today. We will start the what if Deku dated Mina Shido part 1. It was a warm summer evening as the sun set over Yue High School. Students trickled out of the gates as their classes wrapped up for the day. For many, such as those in the hero program, today marked the end of finals for the semester. Some were cheering as they left, celebrating their freedom from the work. Others simply look exhausted, eager to get home and collapse into bed. Regardless, one thing was for sure the end of finals had put everyone's mind at ease. Well, almost everyone. Mina Shido sat alone in the famous or infamous, depending on who you ask classroom 1A. She was slumped forward in her seat slightly, her head tilted down, so she was staring at her desk. It was certainly an odd sight the pink hair in training was known for being one of the first students out of the classroom, once the bell rang. Yet here she was, sitting like a statue as her peers were all heading home for the day. The only reason she hadn't been kicked out was there hadn't actually been class in the homeroom today, their practical exams were held in another part of the building. The exam that Mina had failed. The reason she was sitting here, staring at a blank desk with an equally blank expression on her face. Another oddity in her behavior. Everyone knew Mina was possibly the most expressive emotional student in the class. Happy, sad, angry, everyone knew whatever she was feeling. But right now, her expression was unreadable. Devoid of any kind of emotion. She had lost track of how long she'd sat here, staring at her desk like it was the most fascinating thing in the world. She didn't really care either. Her mind was entirely focused on the exam she had failed just a little while ago. Spectacularly failed at that. There may not have been a more total failure in the history of this school, she reckoned. Oh sure, Kirishima and Sato had also failed, but they at least looked like that came somewhat close. They didn't just spend the whole test running like an idiot, never even seeing their opponent. They at least had a plan, as bullheaded as it was. Mina and Kaminari on the other hand looked downright pathetic. Not that Mina blamed her partner his quirk was simply not well suited for the task they had. See, it wasn't just the fact that Mina had failed the exam that was making her feel so horrible. Oh, it certainly played a part, because it meant she was no longer going to the training camp she had been looking forward to. It also meant she was going to have a very fun conversation at home tonight. But she could move past all that. No, it was seeing everyone else's performance in the finals that was making her feel like she was about to vomit. Todoroki and Yeoi Rozu, Sayu and Tokoyami, Kota and Jiru everyone had performed spectacularly. Their strategy, teamwork, and technique had led them all to victory against their teachers one way or another. Even Mineta showed some resolve for once in his life. And Mina was happy for all of them, ecstatic even. Seeing how much her classmates had improved over the semester was incredible. But it also showed just how far Mina had fallen behind. Mina Ishido, ranked 19 out of 20 students and frankly, based on how much more quickly Kaminari had grasped topics during their group study sessions at Yeoi Rose's, she was beginning to suspect this exam might push her to 20. Mina Ishido, the student who held the record for after-school detention with Mr. Izawa. Mina Ishido, the girl who was beginning to question just what it was she was doing here. Seriously what am I doing here the horn girl let out a sigh. This exam had been one hell of a wacky call, that was for sure. She was at the finest school in the country for heroes, and yet one semester later she felt like she hadn't improved in the slightest. Oh, sure she survived the villain attack at the USJ, but that was because of everyone else. In fact, she was pretty certain she was the only one who hadn't fraud. And while it was true she placed quite high at the sports festival, it was mostly because she rode on the coattails of Bakugu to the top 16, and just so happened to go against the one guy whose weakness she knew perfectly in the first round. Other than that a long list of failed assignments, contests, and of course exams. Slacking off at arcades instead of doing work. Hanging out with her hardworking classmates instead of catching up on studies, pretending like she belonged here. Yo pretending. Reflecting on all of this as she sat here, Mina had begun to suspect that Shiyue was not the place for her. This was a prestigious school for the best of the best, and while her asset quirk was certainly powerful, she was hardly an exemplary student. This disaster of a final was a clear indicator of that. Letting out another sigh, Mina placed her elbows on the desk and let her face sink into her hands. She might have started crying, but she had done enough of that today. She didn't even feel that sad anyway, just disappointed, really. Disappointed in herself. She didn't move her hands when she heard the door open and shut, nor did she move them when she heard the footsteps slowly approach her. She finally moved them as a timid male voice spoke, when she immediately recognized. A sheet of the concern in his voice was obvious. She slowly turned her head up to look at the source of the voice, her expression not changing. Midoriya. A few minutes earlier. Izuka Midoriya let out a yawn as he walked down the halls of Yue, eager to get home. He loved this school, and was grateful every single day that he had gotten the chance to come here, but these finals had taken a lot out of him. It was bad enough that he had to work with his friend to Nebuli and fight a teacher, but when said teacher was all might even with those training weights, it was an absurd. It was one of the many times he found himself questioning the teachings methods of this school. Still, this place was the best for a reason, and he had ultimately prevailed. 
Somehow, he and Kakin had successfully worked together to overcome All Might and Pass. It made him realize just how much he had grown since starting here. How much he had gotten control over one for all, though he obviously had a long way to go before truly making it his own. He couldn't help but be a little proud of himself, a rare feeling for the Cork Inheritor. But as always, he quickly found himself thinking of other more than himself. Not everyone had been as fortunate as him four of his classmates had failed the practical final, which meant they wouldn't be attending the training retreat. Kirishima, Sato, Kaminari, Ashido he could only imagine how they were feeling. Ashido his mind drifted back to when he first returned from his test. Everyone had watched and were all waiting to congratulate him, even the ones that hadn't passed their own tests. But while they were happy for him, they couldn't completely hide how upset they were about their own results. Ashido had stood out in particular to Izuku because he just wasn't used to seeing her look so down. She almost always had a smile on her face, typically having a very brief but comedically exaggerated reaction, as something had actually upset her. This was different though. She was clearly trying to hide it, but Izuku could tell something was off. He had wanted to say something, but before he had a chance he was instructed to go down to the nurse's office. Izuku stroked his chin as he thought about this out loud. Fortunately, the hallway was empty so nobody was around to hear his trademark mumbling. By the time he had gotten out of the nurse's office, everyone else in his class had left for home, and he was looking forward to doing the same. As the formerly quirkless boy passed by his homeroom, a sudden flash of pink in the corner of his eye snapped him out of his rambling. He backed up a few steps to look through the door window. The source of said pink flash was none other than Mino Shido. What's she doing in there how the student's eyes widened a bit as he got a better look as his classmate. He had noticed something off about her before, but this was. He almost didn't recognize her. Any of her usual energy was completely gone. Her face looked devoid of any kind of emotion as she sat completely motionless at her seat, slumped forward with her head tilted down. No crying, no anger, just nothing. It kind of scared Izuku. How long has she been here he muttered as he stared at the acid user. After several seconds, she suddenly moved as he placed her elbows on the desk and raised up her arms, letting her face fall into hands. Izuku grimaced a bit as he realized he started to recognize her unusual behavior. The look, the body language, everything about her demeanor was all too familiar to him. This was the look of someone who felt completely defeated. Someone who was giving up. Izuku was very well acquainted with that feeling whether it was the day he found out he wasn't going to get a quirk, or at the times in middle school where he would succumb to his classmates jeering. But when the more cynical almighty first met, I told him becoming a hero would be impossible without a quirk, he had dealt with it more times than he could count. It was something he never wanted to experience again, and seeing someone else, especially someone like Mina, going through that torment. Izuku's hands balled into fists. He couldn't stand to see her like this. The door creaked as the green-haired boy opened it, shutting it behind him as he entered the room. He had never said more than a few words to Mina since he met her, but that didn't matter right now. She didn't look up as he approached her desk. Ashido he called out. The horn girl seemed to respond to this as he slowly lifted her head up to him. Midoriya. Much like her expression, Mina's voice was lacking its usual energy and bubbliness. She didn't say anything else as she stared blankly at him. A oh, what are you doing in here shul is over yeah I know, Izuku stammered as he spoke, not entirely sure what the best thing to say right now was. Plus, he still was a little uneasy talking to girls. Oh? There was a brief silence as the two continued to stare at each other. Ice is everything alright Izuku obviously knew the answer, but he needed to say something. Yep. Another one word answer. Are you sure this time Mina shut her eyes, breathing in a bit. Yes, I'm sure. Everything's fine Midoriya. There was a hint of irritation in her voice, another emotion Izuku didn't usually hear from Mina. He backed up a step, raising his hand slightly. What the one for all inheritor didn't realize was that he was one of the last people Mina wanted to see right now. Out of all of the exams, his was the one that had truly made her realize just how behind she had fallen. Midoriya and Bakugu. Possibly the two most incompatible students in the class, up against the top hero in the entire world. An impossible task, right? Well somehow, some way, they had done the impossible. Bakugu and Midoriya, the two students who were clearly enemies before they had come to UA, managed to put aside whatever problems they had, and work together to win against All Might. Freaking All Might. And this was the same guy who placed last in the initial court test at the start of the year. The guy who couldn't use his power without shattering his limbs. Now he was one of the best in the class, capable of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the juggernaut that was All Might, even if he was handicapped. Just thinking about it made her pissed off. Not at it Midoriya, but at herself. Look, if you want to talk about the exam this guy really didn't know when to back off. I said I was fine, okay, Mina shouted as she suddenly leapt to her feet. Izuku jumped back at this, raising his hands up even more. What, you think I'm upset about failing this stupid test, and not going to this stupid retreat her hands were balled into fists, arms shaking slightly as she yelled at her classmate. Izuku simply stared, what he did the sudden outburst of emotion. 
After a few more seconds, Mina sighed, relaxing slightly as she shut her eyes. This wasn't his fault. She shouldn't be lashing out at him like this. I'm sorry. Her voice was much lower now. I'm just another sigh. Izuku slowly lowered his hands. I know you're just trying to help. That's what you do, right? She put on a smile. A sad forced smile. Always butting into people's business whether they want you to or not. Always helping everyone out. Always striving to be the best hero you can be. Izuku blinked in confusion, unsure where she was going with this. Seriously, amazing how strong you've gotten. How strong everyone's gotten. It's been one hell of a semester, hasn't it? Her smile drooped a bit as she looked down. Izuku was starting to put it together. The I have gotten way stronger too, Ashido, he started to say. She held up a hand as he was about to continue, shaking her head. Come on, Midoriya, you saw me out there right? She let out a soft, hollow laugh. Couldn't even find my opponent. Spend the whole damn thing running like an idiot. Some hero I am, ha her smile was getting less and less convincing. That's me, bottom of the barrel of class 1A, right? It wasn't just the exam, Izuku realized. He knew Mina was struggling with academics in general, but it never seemed to bother her that much. But it seemed the practical had changed that. Look, Ashido, you. You, though, you were incredible. She wasn't listening to him at this point. Seriously, you managed to get your weird quirk under control, and get Bakugu to work together with you. And you beat All Might. She patted him on the shoulder, which made him tense up a bit. You're amazing. You really do belong at this school. She began to walk past him, making her way for the door. Izuku stood in place as she left. I belong here he muttered. Unlike you is that what you're trying to say he turned his head towards her, noticing she had stopped moving. She didn't face him, but he saw her rub her eye for a moment. Without answering, she continued forward, putting a hand on the doorknob. Izuku shut his eyes tight, gritting his teeth. He had to say something. I was quirkless. Mina froze, the doorknob half waited. She slowly turned to face her classmate, a look of utter confusion on her face. Izuku took a second to realize what he blurted out. Crap. Not exactly what he wanted to say. He took a deep breath and gathered himself. Since Bakugu had called him a quirkless loser a few times in front of the class, he had practiced a cover story in case this topic ever came up. My quirk, he started, looking at his hand. I didn't always have it. Mina was now completely turned around, her hand off the doorknob. It didn't appear until I was done with middle school, actually. Doctor couldn't really explain why. It wasn't a lie, technically. So, I've spent most of my life thinking I was quirkless. The heron training looked at his feet, partially because he felt bad about lying, but mostly because he was bringing up bad memories. It, it was rough growing up thinking that. Mina could only imagine. Quirkless people were rarity to be sure. She wasn't sure she ever met one, at least one that she knew for a fact was quirkless. But she did know how low an opinion society had of the quirkless. They were treated like secondless citizens at times, as nobody thought they would accomplish anything in life. Was Izuku treated the same? All my life, I've dreamed of becoming a hero. Even when I was told I was never going to get a quirk, I kept on trying. I knew it was basically an impossible dream, but he looked up, a more determined look on his face now. Heroes are never supposed to give up, right Mina's eyes widened slightly as he said this. Of course, nobody else believed in me back then. A lot of kids like to bully me, and I didn't really have any friends. I mean, who wants to be friends with a quirkless loser, right? Quirkless loser. Mina had heard Bakugu call Midoriya that more than a few times. She, like many others, hadn't thought much of it. Bakugu said a lot of shit, after all. But hearing this the two clearly knew each other before Yue. Was Bakugu one of the bullies he mentioned? Her hands clenched into fists once again. If there was one thing she couldn't stand, it was bullies. People who picked on the weak and defenseless, they were basically junior villains. Mina had stood up to a lot of bullies during her childhood. It was one of the things that had made her want to become a hero. She had always taken her quirk for granted. She never once imagined her life without it. After all, everyone she knew had quirks. She couldn't possibly see herself even thinking about becoming a hero if she didn't have one. She couldn't see anyone without a quirk thinking that. But Izuku Midoriya, the student who continued to shock the entire class with amazing feats, whether it be pushing Todoroki to the brink of the sports festival, surviving an encounter with the infamous hero killer, or of course besting All Might in his final exam, had. Even though it sounded like he had been put down by everyone most of his life, he clearly never gave up on becoming a hero. Heroes were basically his life, everyone knew that. But despite that, I just couldn't give up. There were times when I felt like I should, but then I would remember All Might's words, and how a hero needs to smile, even when things look bad. His voice was getting louder and louder as he spoke, his stutter long gone. All Might. Izuku idolized the man, everyone also knew that. The symbol of peace and justice, who always had a smile on his face no matter what the situation was. He inspired hope for people all across the world. Mina's eyes dropped to the floor as her hands relaxed. Despite not having a quirk, Izuku kept on dreaming. Kept on smiling. How did he do it? 
How could he have hope in a completely hopeless situation like that? But I couldn't do it forever, Izuku said, his voice quieting down a bit. I hit a point in my life where I just couldn't smile anymore. After years of hearing everyone telling you that you can't do something it gets to you, you know Mina looked up, realizing that Izuku was now the one looking at the floor. His face told her that these were some painful memories he was bringing up. I was ready to just fall down and give up. I would never become a hero. Why? Why was he telling her all this the two of them barely knew each other? Why was he spilling his guts like this? But then, someone caught me, he continued, looking her in the eye once again. Someone told me, despite as absurd as it sounded, that yes, I could become a hero, quirk or no quirk. The fierce, determined look returned to his eyes as he spoke. And if it wasn't for that person, I probably wouldn't be here today. Even though it turned out I did have a quirk in the end. Again, he technically wasn't lying about that. I'm telling you all this, because because he stuck out his arms. I'm here to be the one to catch you he shouted. I know it's hard accepting failure, but but you shouldn't just give up Mina was stunned. She hadn't seen Izuku this passionate since the fight with Todoroki. And he was this fired up because of her. I, I honestly think you're one of the strongest students in our class. Mina thought he might just be saying that to cheer her up, but he sounded so genuine. Because he was. Izuku had always admired Mina's combat prowess, even if she hadn't really gotten a chance to show them off. And her quirk was potentially one of the most powerful in the class. He was actually grateful he had never had to fight her at the sports festival, he honestly had no clue how he would have a chance, since her acid made melee attacks almost impossible. You might be behind now, but that just means that just means you have to work harder than everyone else he exclaimed. Those were the words he had to keep telling himself the first few days of class, when he had zero control over one for all. Where Carter Mina finally spoke, echoing his words. She looked at Izuku. The guy who got into UA with zero combat points on his entrance exam, who couldn't throw a punch without breaking his arm at first. Now he was one of the top students in both grades and combat ability. Izuku Midoriya, the guys who, despite being supposedly quirkless, never gave on his goal. Mina's whole body tensed up as her eyes shut tight, her hands balling into fists yet again. What the hell was she doing? After everything he had been through, Izuku was still one of the most driven students in the class. And she seriously considering dropping out of class over a failed midterm. You're right. I do need to work harder. She put her hands on her hips, standing to attention as she gave Izuku a look as fierce and driven as the one he had been giving her. How can I be a hero if I'm gonna run away the second things get bad? A smile appeared on her face. Not another fake forced smile, but a genuine Mina Oshido smile. Seriously, I don't know what I was thinking she laughed. In an instant, Mina seemed to be back to her usual cheery self. Izuku smiled back, relieved that his talk had actually worked. Just wow, I had no idea you had gone through all that. Well, ah, uh, it's something I really like talking about. Izuku was also going back to his normal, more timid self. The kind that still struggled even talking to girls. Mina couldn't help but giggle at his sudden shift in demeanor. Well thank you. You don't know how bad I needed to hear that. Her yellow black eyes blinked. Er, well I guess he did. The two stared at each other in silence for a few moments. Now that they were calming down, Izuku realized he was standing alone in the classroom with a girl he barely knew. Ooh, don't mention it, Ashido. His stammering was getting worse, to which Mina giggled again. Izuku felt his cheeks getting warm. Call me Mina. Now his cheeks were getting really warm. Are you two finished a third voice made the pair of students jump. Mina whipped around to see Mr. Izawa was standing in the open doorway. Seriously, I could hear your shouting from my office. Now both students blushed. We're locking up, so you two need to head home. Yes sir Izuku and Mina spoke in unison, quickly making their way out of the classroom. They had learned by not to ignore their homeroom teacher's orders. Izuku sighed, and started to make his way for the school exit. This had been quite a day, and he was even more ready than before to get home and dress. He felt his entire body go stiff as something warm suddenly slammed into him. It took him a second to realize Mina had practically tackled him into an enthusiastic hug. A hug. Izuku was being hugged. Izuku was being hugged by girl. The green-haired boy felt like he was on fire as his entire body turned bright red. WH Hubu. Izuku tried to speak, but his brain simply wasn't working right now, as it attempted to process the events that were occurring. Thank you. A soft, grateful voice spoke in his ear before he was released. He managed to look at Mina, who was giving him an even more wholesome smile than usual. I mean it. You really are an incredible guy, Izuku. He was still trying to process what had just happened as she walked off. It took several more seconds before he finally felt like he could move. Wait, did she call him Izuku? Hey, Midoriya before his brain shut down a second time, Izuku heard his always voice. He turned to see the erasure user still standing there, staring at him. Snap out of it and get a move on already. The eyes Sir Izuku exclaimed before literally running off, his fear of annoying his teacher outweighing his embarrassment. As he watched his student run, as always sighed. Those two really are trouble.
Despite these words, a small smile appeared on his face. Like Izuku, he too had noticed Mina's demeanor earlier today. And he had also noticed the fact that Izuku noticed. He was going to talk to the pink-haired acid user after class, but something told him Izuku was going to do it for him. Nice going, kid. Mina had certainly been a difficult student, but Izawa recognized her potential. She just needed a little more drive to succeed. And if anyone could give her that, it was Izuku. Mina was getting a little sick of Izawa's logical deceptions. That was not to say she wasn't absolutely ecstatic when her homeroom teacher had announced that everyone was going to the training camp, regardless of their test results. Of course, the cheers of the exam flunkies quickly silenced when it was announced they would be getting additional remedial training, which, as Izawa practically threatened, would be even more grueling than summer school. Somehow though, Mina wasn't as bothered by that news as she thought she'd be. Nor was she as bothered by the fact that yes, she had dropped down to the lowest class grade. Everyone had ended up passing the written exams, but as she expected Kaminari had earned a higher score than her, bumping him just past her. Most students would have been devastated by all this. But for some reason, it just made Mina feel even more motivated than ever to improve herself. It just means you have to work harder than anyone else Izuku's words from yesterday were still fresh in the pink girl's head. She was still feeling pumped by his speech, and hearing that she was getting more work to do was just making her even more determined to prove herself. She was sure she would soon be changing her tune once the remedial training actually started, but she knew it was for her own good. But that wasn't happening yet. For now, she had even more important things to worry about. Such as the class shopping trip. Mina had been to the Kiyashi Ward shopping mall before, but some of her classmates were clearly experiencing it for the first time. She couldn't help but smirk as her peers gawked around at the shopping center, commenting on its size and design. To Mina it was nothing special at this point, but to them it was a completely new experience. Izuku was one such person. Mina wasn't surprised. Given his personality, the guy didn't seem like a very outgoing sort. And now that she knew about his rough childhood, it was even less surprising to hear he had never been somewhere like this. She frowned as she recalled some of yesterday's conversation. To think that anyone would pick on someone like Izuku appalled her. He seemed like such a kind and caring person, never bothering anyone. Then again, it was probably because he was bullied so much that he turned out so meek and shy. It may have sounded rude to call him meek, but it was more or less the reason Mina had never really talked to the guy. His quiet nature made him easy to ignore, and he seemed to intentionally try to avoid standing out whenever possible. Even his current outfit, a shirt and sweatpants, just screamed plain. Besides, he looked like he had made good friends with some of their other classmates, so she didn't feel bad about, for lack of a better word, ignoring him. But yesterday changed that. While it was true Zuku had shown that bolder side of him in the past, seeing it directed at her, had really made Mina reevaluate her opinion of him. Not that she thought poorly of him, mind you, but she felt a sort of admiration for him that wasn't there before. It made her want to get to know him better. Besides, he looked completely lost here. With everyone splitting up, he was going to need a guide, and couldn't help but feel like she owed him for everything he did yesterday. She approached the confused looking student as he was trying to get his bearings, mumbling to himself. Yo, Midoriya, she greeted with a smile. Izuku quickly turned to face her, clearly a bit started by the acid cork user's sudden appearance. Once he registered it was Mina, his face turned red. Mina's black pinky shirt and jean shorts were a bit more revealing than her school uniform. Plus, that close encounter at the end of their conversation was still fresh in his mind. Hey, Ashido, he stuttered, quickly looking away. Mina raised an eyebrow at this reaction. I said you can call me Mina, she reminded him. Right, sorry. Mina was still perplexed by his demeanor. She knew he was shy, but normally not to this extent. And he had no problem talking to her yesterday. As she thought of yesterday, she quickly recalled how she had parted with him. A grin appeared on her face. That explained a lot. Hey, hey, I'm not gonna tackle you again, so calm down. Evidently, her surprise hug attack was still on Izuku's mind. Though she shouldn't be surprised he had turned so red from that she might have mistaken him for her long-lost cousin or something. It hadn't been her intent to make him so embarrassed she was just excited, and felt a hug was the best way to thank her classmate for everything he did. Though it was a nice bonus. Seeing him this flustered was entertaining to say the least. It also made him look really damn cute. That's not too mean, did you need something before Mina could fully process that last thought? Izuku turned back to face her, his face returning to normal. I just figured you might want someone to show you around, she threw her arms out, striking some sort of pose. And I just so happen to be quite the expert on all things Kiyashi. Izuka looked around the massive mall again, then back at his pink classmate. It was true he had no idea where he was going, and the list of supplies he needed for the trip wasn't small. Mina would be a big help, but at the same time Izuka didn't want to be a nuisance. Plus, walking around alone with a girl he barely knew. Izuka felt his cheeks warming up again. Sheesh, you're acting funny today, Mina teased, which didn't help his blush. 
What happened to that Midoriya I was talking to yesterday? Izuku shut his eyes and took a deep breath. She was right, he needed to calm down. She was just a classmate who was offering to help show him around. Sorry, he apologized. And thank you, but I don't want to be a burden. You can probably cover more ground without me. PFFFT. Mina rolled her eyes. Seriously, are you sure you and that guy I talked to yesterday are the same person? It's fine, I don't mind giving you a tour. She crossed her arms. Besides, I consider us friends after all that stuff you told me, wouldn't you and what kind of friend would I be, if I left you all alone out here Izuku was taken aback by this. It was true that he had said some pretty personal things to her things he hadn't even talked about with his other friends. But still, hearing this girl who he had basically just started talking to call him her friend was not something he was used to. Not to say he didn't appreciate it. And admittedly, she had been on the back of his mind since last night. He wouldn't mind getting to know her a little more. The cork inheritor nodded. Great, then let's get moving before Izuku could react, Mina had suddenly grabbed his wrist and began walking at a brisk pace, pulling him along. Wait the feeling of her hand on his arm quickly made Izuku's blush return. Wait a shido. Mina she corrected him, looking back with one of her trademark grins. Now come on I'll show you one of my favorite clothing stores first, and then. Izuku let out an exasperated sigh as the excited girl listed off store after store. Just what had he gotten himself into? As the teens made their way to an escalator, neither one noticed a hooded figure that had been observing their conversation. They slowly rose to their feet as they began to follow the pair. It turned out Izuku had gotten himself into a rather fun time. Though it took a little while for him to get over his usual awkwardness, Mina soon had him talking about all sorts of topics, as the two got to know each other more and more. As they hopped from shop to shop, the two discussed their quirks, their families, school, hobbies, and much more. They had been able to keep a conversation going for nearly an hour, now evidently, Mina's seemingly unlimited energy was contagious. Despite their drastically different personalities, the pair had more in common than they thought, mostly when it came to heroes. While nobody could match Izuku's downright obsession with all things hero, Mina came surprisingly close. It had been a while since he was able to discuss stuff like hero comics in such detail without getting weird stares. But in the end, All Might broke out of the hold and finished the villain off in one punch, Izuku excitedly recounted one of the many All Might comics he had read. Yeah it was awesome he was all like Detroit eat smosh, and then boom KO it bad guy Mina put on her best All Might impression, as she thrust a fist outward, a bag full of camping supplies in her other hand. The two of them laughed. Obviously most All Might stories ended in a similar fashion, but that didn't make them any less enjoyable. I still can't believe you named all your moves after his, she suddenly looked at him with a smirk. You're such a fanboy. Uh, hey. Izuku rubbed the back of his head as he grinned sheepishly. Maybe a little. A little come on, you freaking idolized the guy she laughed as she teased him, poking at an All Might patch on his backpack. Izuku responded by quickly trying to cover up said patch, trying to hide his blush. This display simply made Mina's laughter increase, which in turn amplified the All Might fan's embarrassment. Another thing Izuku was quickly learning about his new friend was that she loved to tease. Constantly. They couldn't go 5 minutes without her making some comment to put him in a state like this. The I were really enjoying this, are you Izuku asked as he calmed himself down. Sure Mina's grin widened. However, it suddenly vanished as something occurred to her. Hey this isn't bothering you, is it Izuku looked at her, slightly confused. I mean, you know I'm not trying to make fun of you or anything, right there was suddenly concern in her voice. The horned girl had gotten so caught up in their conversation, she had briefly forgotten Izuku's story from yesterday, and how he had been teased and mocked by his peers for a large portion of his life. Oh no, no Izuku waved his hands in front of him. I know you don't mean any of it. There was a clear contrast between her playful jabs and the malicious insults Bakugu and his other old bullies would shout. He recognized that. To be honest, I'm kinda glad you're doing it, he admitted. Sure, all the joking made him flustered, but he didn't want Mina to act around him differently just because of his past. After all, he had been treated weird by everyone most of his life. Too mean, you wouldn't be saying that stuff if you thought I couldn't take it, right he looked at her, smiling. Mina quickly understood. He didn't want her to think he was weak. And of course, she didn't. Rather, she now believed he was one of, if not the toughest, bravest person in the whole class. Certainly more than her had she been in his shoes, she would have given up on becoming a hero long ago. Still, it was kind of hilarious to think a guy with a will as strong as his, could be so easily tripped up by a few silly comments. Izuku Midoriya was one weird guy. Hey, ain't those UA students their conversation was interrupted by a passerby. Yeah, I think I recognized them class 1A, from the sports festival another voice cried out. The aforementioned students turned to see a small group of people approaching them. More fans. Mina looked back at her compatriot. Guess that's just one of the many perks of being a UA student, ha, huh? several more people had also taken notice of them. Yeah perks, Izuku said reluctantly. He obviously appreciated the praise, but his awkwardness made it tough to deal with all these fans. 
the two celebrities spent a few minutes talking to the group, getting photos and even signing an autograph or two. Unsurprisingly, Izuku was getting the lion's share of the attention, most of the crowd commenting on his fight with Todoroki. It made sense that fight was probably the highlight of the event, even more so than the finals. Of course, it only made Izuku's awkwardness with strangers even more apparent as he struggled to converse with everyone. Mina giggled as she signed a child's notebook. He was just so cute. She blinked. There it was again. Where was this coming from it wasn't like she thought of him in this way before. As the fans dispersed, Izuku slumped his shoulders and let out a huge sigh of relief. Man, how do pros handle this every day he asked nobody in particular. He looked positively drained. The price of fame, Amina nudged his arm with her elbow. You shouldn't be so surprised. With everything you pulled off at the festival, it's no wonder you're so popular. Izuku looked at her. Like I said before, you're pretty amazing. For whatever reason, hearing that from her gave the one for all wielder a fuzzy feeling. He felt his face warm up yet again as he looked at her smiling face, and he couldn't help but smile himself. For a few moments, they stared at each other in silence. As he looked, Izuku for some reason found himself drawn into his companion's eyes. Those black and yellow orbs had always intrigued the boy ever since he first saw Mina. As he gazed into them, he could see so much emotion in them. They radiated with that passion the pink-haired heroin training was known for. They were beautiful. The luo of the snapping of fingers brought Izuku back to his senses. Earth to Midoriya, come in Midoriya, the source of the snapping was Mina's fingers in front of his face. Izuku's eyes went wide. How long was he staring at her like that? His whole face turned red. Ah sorry, I just I was the Humantomato hybrid was struggling with words. What were we talking about? I said I was going to use the little girl's room. Mina decided to chalk her friend's behavior up to the nerves he was probably still feeling from the fans. You mind waiting here I'll be back in a few. Do? Yeah, no problem, Izuku answered as he slowly began to cool down. Mina walked off to take care of her business, leaving him standing on his own. Once she was out of sight, Izuku began to think. What was that about just now he'd never thought that kind of stuff about someone before, especially not their eyes. Still, the more he thought, the more he started to admit that she was rather pretty. Ah he both verbally and mentally yelped. Where was all this coming from what was he, Mineta was he seriously this awkward when it came to girls, but why didn't he ever think about Yuraka like that? Whoa, you're you a kid, right class 1AA man's voice shook the flustered boy out of his thoughts. Wow, awesome can I get your autograph Izuku sighed, not exactly in the mood to deal with more fans right now. Hey, aren't you that guy who got all banged up by the ice kid at the sports festival the same voice, suddenly now much closer, continued. Izuku felt his whole body go rigid as an arm was suddenly thrown around his neck. Ah yeah that's me the nervous voice started to sweat a bit. This guy had no concept of personal space. And hold on, didn't you also have a run in with that hero killer guy, Stain the man continued. Izuku suddenly felt like he recognized his voice. The eyes, sir. Yeah I really can know your stuff. Why was he getting a bad feeling all of a sudden? Man, you're really something and to think, I'd be meeting you again here of all places the voice suddenly took on a more sinister tone. Wait, again what did he mean by? Izuku let out a small cry as the hand draped loosely over his shoulder, suddenly grabbed his neck. This must be fate or something. You seem to be having trouble remembering, but I guess the last time you saw me was at the UA invasion, Haizuku Midoriya. The UA student's blood ran cold as he realized what was going on. This voice he recognized, this hand, the Yusuke. He slowly turned to see the face of the man who had struck fear into class 1A that day. The terrifying leader of the League of Villains, who had nearly killed both Izuku and All Might that day. Even without the hand covering his grinning face, the young hero in training knew exactly who he was looking at. Tamura Shigaraki. Izuku frantically looked around. Nobody had seemed to notice his situation. Back natural, kid. We're just old friends catching up, got it the villain whispered. I just want to have a little chat, that's all. Yeah, a nice friendly chat. Shigaraki began walking, taking his captive with him. And don't even think about doing anything funny. Because the second you do, you know what'll happen right Izuku gulped. Currently, Shigaraki's hand was clamped around his neck. All but one finger. The moment all of my fingers are touching you, you'll start crumbling from the skin down. Within a minute, you'll be nothing but dust, Shigaraki hissed. Izuku's mind immediately recalled seeing this monster's cork in action against Izawa. But but if you do Izuku struggle to speak. You know, a hero eye in this crowd will well catch you. Of course they will. But look around, kid. The master of the League of Villains gestured to the oblivious crowd around them. Just about everyone here has a quirk that could easily hurt people. Yet none of them seem afraid. Why because they think everyone will obey the same laws they do. That nobody would attack so suddenly. He cackled. I could probably kill 20, maybe 30 people before someone finally stopped me. Anyone I wanted, really. He leaned in close to Izuku's ear, his next words dripping with malice. Like that pink girlfriend of yours, for instance. The captive's eyes shot open as wide as they could. Had he been following them this whole time? 
the image of Mina crumbling away flashed through his head. Ashido, he wasn't in the right state of mind to even remotely think about the girlfriend comment. Ashido, ha, what a pretty name. A pretty name for a pretty girl. We wouldn't want to worry about her now would we? Mr. Hiro Shigaraki's grin widened as Izuku's face went ghost white. They both stayed quiet for a few moments. But well, what do you want to talk about Izuku knew he couldn't fight this. He'd just have to play along and either wait for an opening, or hope this lunatic would actually spare his life. That's the spirit Shigaraki laughed once again. A dry, empty laugh. Now let's find a nice quiet place, shall we? Mina wiped her hands on her shirt as she exited the restroom. Seriously, all this advanced technology nowadays, and we still can't get hand dryers that actually work she grumbled. She checked her phone. Crap. It had been about 15 minutes since she left Izuku on his own. She'd been jumped by more a few more groups of fans shortly after parting ways with him. Hope he's not too annoyed. Her shopping companion didn't strike the horned girl as an impatient sort, but she felt bad nonetheless. Fortunately, she avoided running into any more speed bumps on her way back. She quickly returned to where she left Izuku, looking around for her green-haired friend. At first glance, she didn't see him. Midori she began to walk around. This was the correct spot, wasn't it she took a moment to check the nearby shops, figuring he had wandered into one while he was waiting for her. She saw no sign of him. The heck Mina's eyebrows furrowed slightly as she folded her arms, pondering where the boy might have gone. Did he also go to the restroom, and she just missed him did he go looking for her, since she had taken so long she didn't think he'd just ditch her for no reason. Unless, he thought she had ditched him it was certainly possible. Izuku certainly didn't have the most self-esteem did he take her long absence as a way of saying she didn't want to hang out with him anymore. The more she thought about I, the more likely it started to seem. Shit, why didn't I get his number she asked herself, widening her search. Exchanging numbers was typically one of the first things she did with a new friend, but for some reason she had been reluctant to do it with Izuku. She wasn't sure what the reason was, but it had stopped her from asking him about it. Why was that because he was a guy or something, but she had Kaminari and Kirishima's numbers, so that didn't make sense. Granted, they weren't as cute as Izuku. She slapped her free hand over her mouth, despite not saying anything. There it was again why did she keep thinking this kind of stuff? Mina gulped. She was starting to recognize this feeling. She hadn't experienced it in a couple years, but this was typically how a crush started for her. Oh no, she felt heat in her face. Was this really happening? Mina yo, Mina hearing her name, Mina quickly abandoned the thought as she looked to see Kirishima. She smiled, waving to her friend. Sup, horn buddy. Hey, just checking out shops, figuring out what I still need. The spiky hair drew deep pause. Seriously, I can't believe we're gonna be going to this camp thing after all totally sweet right well, asides from the whole extra lessons thing Kirishima's enthusiasm was quickly replaced with slight dread. Oh, don't be like that. The fact that we're going at all is already crazy. Yeah, but still. I'm kind of looking forward to the extra work, honestly, the hardening cork user looked at her friend like she had grown a second head. Ah, uh, who are you and what did you do to Mina he asked. You're looking forward to doing work Mina rolled her eyes. Ha ha ha, she fackled. Her smile suddenly dropped. Yeah, I actually am. I she paused. I kind of had a moment of self-reflection yesterday. Realized I need to make some changes in how I look at things. Before Kirishima could ask more, she decided to change topics. By the way, did you happen to see Midoriya anywhere I was supposed to meet back up with him here, but he's not around. The spiky-haired boy raised an eyebrow. How huh, Midoriya since when did you hang out with him? Mina's eyes narrowed a bit. What's that supposed to mean? Kirishima raised his hands as if to defend himself. Ah, uh, nothing just surprising, that's all. You two never really seemed close. Mina closed her eyes, sighing lightly. He wasn't wrong. But ah, uh, yeah I think I saw him. Looked like he ran into a friend from outside school or something. Mina's eyes opened a bit wider than before. At least I assume they're not from the school. Didn't really recognize him. The boy kept talking, but Mina wasn't paying attention. A friend from outside school but Izuku had told her he didn't really have other friends. The pink haired junior hero suddenly had a bad feeling. Where did you see him she interrupted whatever he was saying, her tone less cheery than usual. How? Oh, he was over that way, Kirishima explained as he pointed in a direction. Something Ray, wait Mina suddenly began fast walking in that direction. Mina, what's wrong she didn't answer. She couldn't explain it, but something in her gut was saying Izuku was in trouble. After a few minutes, Mina rounded stopped at the top of a staircase leading to a small long area. She scanned it for any sign of her friend. Where are you ha her eyes rested on a bench a short distance from said lounge, where she spotted a familiar green and black hairdo. Izuku Midoriya was sitting on the bench, with a tall hooded figure next to him. The two seemed to be having a conversation, with the hooded person's right arm around Izuku's shoulder. They were perpendicular to her position, so she was getting a side view of both of them. At first glance, it didn't seem unusual. But as Mina continued to look, she noticed Izuku's face and body language were very unusual. He was very tense, and his eyes occasionally darted around. 
His face wasn't the usual awkward, nervous one he often wore. The yellowy girl had seen enough of that expression today to know this wasn't taught. This was very different, like he was afraid of something. She saw him shift his body slightly. The figure seemed to respond to this, pulling him slightly closer. In the movement, however, she saw something that told her everything else she needed to know. The hooded person's hand was grasping at Izuku's throat. Mina suddenly found herself leaping at the stairway's railing, and activating her core to slide down it like she was grinding on a skateboard. She subconsciously went for the least potent acid she could muster, making it little more than a green goo. This display caused quite a reaction from the dozens of people on the stairway. She slid down the railing, leaping onto the floor below without skipping a beat. There was no thought process behind her actions her body had simply begun moving on its own. She dashed towards Izuku's captor, readying a fist. What's the difference between you two Izuku repeated Shigaraki's question back to him. After dragging him off to a somewhat isolated bench, the headed villain had begun to have his chat. At first, it was a lot of nonsense about heroes, violence, and society. A madman's ramblings, Izuku figured. He only half paid attention, desperately looking for a way out of his situation. A Shigaraki dropped his guard for even a second. As soon as the hero killer came up, though, Izuku had his full attention. As it turned out, Stain had not actually been with the League of Villains. And his notoriety was upsetting Shigaraki. He had expressed dismay that nobody was talking about his villainous acts, whether it was the USJ attack or the Nomu outbreak at Hosu. And so he asked Izuku a simple question what made Stain different from Shigaraki. You're both villains, and you've both done unforgivable things, but the hero killer, I could at least understand him. He recalled Stain's final words before he was defeated. We were both inspired by All Might. Shigaraki stayed quiet, prompting the boy to continue. He. He didn't just kill because he wanted to. He even saved my life. Despite his fear, despite the sweat on his face, Izuku managed to look the League of Villains leader in the eye. I can't condone his actions, but he lived according to an ideal. For a moment, Shigaraki was stunned. Izuku wasted no time, and tried to pull away. Before he could, the villain suddenly tightened his grip, pulling his captive closer. Ah oh, now I get it, he muttered. Why both you and the hero killer get me so pissed off? Izuku felt the fingers on his throat digging deeper. It's all about All Might his hands started quivering slightly. He's the reason for everything he's why all these people can be so happy and carefree there was anger in his voice. His fingers dug even deeper, to the point where Izuku was struggling to breath. Abandoning all subtlety, the boy began pulling at Shigaraki's arm, trying to pry himself loose before the villain completely lost it. An NGG. Hey, hey what do you think you're doing the madman looked back at Izuku. Didn't I tell you what would happen if you tried anything, Hiro he slowly lowered his final finger towards the boy's throat. Suddenly, his head snapped to his left. Izuku turned to where he was looking. His eyes widened in shock as he saw what had gotten Shigaraki's attention. Let him go Mina screamed, charging full sprint towards the villain. She was upon him a half second later, her right fist flying towards his face. It never reached its target though. Izuku felt his entire body lurch as, in the blink of an eye, Shigaraki sprang to his feet, caught the punch with his left hand, and swept his attacker's legs out from under her. As Mina landed on her stomach, she felt a shoe dig into her back before she could react, pinning her. The color drained from the no-standing Izuku's face. Shigaraki's hand was still holding his throat. Hey now, that wasn't very nice, the villain said to Mina, his hand still grasping her fist. A surprise attack like that and you call yourself a hero Mina was trying to pull away, but the grip held. Izuku saw cracks starting to form on Mina's hand. No. Everything seemed to slow down. Izuku started to reach for the hand around his throat, as one for all began to activate. Shigaraki was distracted, and his grip had loosened. He needed to get free. He needed to stop this villain. More cracks were forming. Izuku clenched his teeth as he grabbed hold of the hand and pulled. Even more cracks. Shigaraki's head snapped back to his original target, his eyes manic. Izuku felt the hand's grip on his back tightening again. No. He swore he felt his throat grow dry. Lightning was coursing through him as his power surged. Pieces of Mina's skin were starting to flake away, revealing blood and muscle underneath. Mina despite the vice-like grip now on his neck, Izuku still screamed, shutting his eyes. He couldn't bear to watch more. He readied himself to unleash the full force of one for all on Shigaraki, not caring about the consequences. Then, without warning, Izuku felt himself falling backwards. He no longer felt skin against his throat. Reacting immediately, he braced and caught himself, panting. Shigaraki was now recoiling away from him and Mina. And he was shrieking in pain. I, 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 the villain's cry was deafening as he clutched his left hand with his right. Izuku could see what looked like smoke rising from his hand. There was a faint sizzling sound coming from it, and a noxious smell started to fill the boy's nostrils. His gaze turned to Mina, who was now sitting up, her left arm cradling her right hand against her chest. He couldn't see it from this angle. What he did see, though, was a few droplets of greenish liquid falling from it, eating tiny, smoking holes into the floor. Acid. Highly corrosive acid at that. 
the same acid that was now destroying Shigaraki's hand. He quickly made his way to her, the lightning in his body dissipating as his court deactivated. He knelt down so he was eye level with her. Mina she didn't look up, but spoke. Though let escape she spoke through clenched teeth. Her voice was shaky, like she was struggling to say even those words. Escape ah his head whipped around. Shigaraki was gone. Izuku stood, frantically scanning for any sign of him. He barely managed to catch sight of a black hut far in the distance before it disappeared around a corner. Damn it. Knowing there was nothing more he could do, Izuku returned his attention to the girl at his feet. He placed a hand on her shoulder. It's going to be fine, halts on the way he assured her. From here he was able to get a look at her right hand. From the wrist down, almost all the skin was missing. Blood was starting to soak through her shirt. Ah, man Mina turned her head up. Her eyes were closed, but Izuku could see she was fighting back tears. Despite the extreme pain she was clearly in, she somehow managed to force a smile. This was my favorite shirt. Izuku could feel tears forming in his eyes. This was because of him. If he hadn't gotten caught, or if he had been able to act a bit quicker. Hey don't give me that face Mina's eyes were open now. Hero's need to smile leave and when things looked bad right a tear fell from her eye. She was still shaking in fear. The pain on her face was clear, and yet her smile didn't break. He had said the same thing to her yesterday. Izuku rubbed his eyes with an arm, and forced himself to smile. The yeah, eye, you're right. They do. He couldn't keep back his tears for long, but still he kept smiling. Just just hold on, okay, the sound of sirens could be heard in the distance. Shigaraki leaned against the alley wall, catching his breath. He had managed to escape the mall and slip into an alley before any heroes or law enforcement arrived on the scene. All that was left was to lay low until the heat was off. He looked down at his left hand. It was covered in heavy burns and blisters. He winced, the pain still fresh. He scratched at his neck with his right hand, eyes twitching as he glared at the burned hand. That damn pink brat who the hell does she think she is he growled. His whole body was shaking. He recalled the name Izuku had shouted. Mina he practically spat the name out. Mino Shido and Izuku Midoriya I swear, the next time I see either of you his right hand grabbed at a small trash can sitting next to him, which probably crumbled to dust. I'll make sure it hurts. Mina was never a fan of hospitals. Given her adventurous personality, that she had injured herself more than a few times during her childhood. A broken arm after falling from a tree, a twisted foot after jumping from a swing just a little too high, acid burns when she was first using her quirk just a bit too much, Mina was no stranger to the medical world. The main thing that bothered her was all the waiting around. Mina wasn't one to sit still for hours at a time it was one reason she struggled so much in school. Today was no different. Seriously I have to be here another two hours, but I feel fine Mina whined as she sat up in her bed. She was currently in a hospital room, a cast over her right hand and wrist. With her in the room was Chiyushu Zenji, more commonly known by her hero name, Recovery Girl. While she was currently employed at UA as a nurse, she frequently volunteered at various clinics and hospitals in her spare time. This was one such occasion. We need to make sure there aren't any additional effects from that villain's quirk. Besides, you need to rest while your body repairs itself, Recovery Girl stated. She had only shown up a few moments ago, and had just finished applying her healing quirk to the injured student. But I mean a yawn before she could finish her sentence. She suddenly felt incredibly drowsy. Like I said before, my quirk speeds up your body's natural healing, which means your stamina will greatly diminish. You need to rest. The woman's stubborn patient flopped back down in bed, groaning in frustration. If you don't like it, then next time you should think twice about charging into such a dangerous situation. Recovery girl wagged a finger as she scolded the girl. Honestly, you're lucky your injury wasn't worse. And what was I supposed to do let that asshole do whatever he was going to do to my friend Mina leaned her head up slightly to look at the nurse as she spoke. Language, young lady. Right, sorry, Mina looked away, slightly intimidated by the older woman's stern look. I just I had to do something. I saw Midoriya was in trouble, and my body just kind of started moving. I wasn't really thinking about my own safety. Recovery girl sighed. You sound just like him, you know. Always hurling himself a danger to protect others, the sound of the door opening caused both quirk users to turn their heads. Mina smiled as she saw who it was. Ashido Izuku practically ran into the room. He looked both incredibly worried, yet incredibly relieved at the same time. How are you Fio? He felt a sharp pain as something struck the back of his head. Izuku Midoriya, what do I keep telling you about acting so recklessly? Recovery girl jabbed her cane at the boy, as she began to lecture him. It was bad enough when you were hurting your own body, but now your self-destructive behavior is starting to rub off on your classmates, she sounded absolutely furious. No, too didn't Izuku was flailing his arms in front of his face as he desperately tried to explain. Honestly, I have half a mind too. Mina watched her classmate get chewed out by the normally calm nurse. Evidently the two of them knew each other very well. Given how Izuku's quirk worked, Mina wasn't exactly surprised. After about a minute of scolding, recovery girl sighed as she placed both hands atop her cane. 
A hero needs to be willing to risk their lives, I know, but remember you're still just a child. She turned to Mina. The same goes for you, young lady. Yes ma'am. Mina nodded, not wanting to invite the healer's wrath. Recovery girl smiled softly. Good. Now get some rest, she instructed as she left the room. Mina wasn't the only patient she needed to see, after all. Izuku approached the left side of the bed, still looking a bit shaken by his verbal thrashing. Man, she really has it in for you, huh Mina asked with a smirk. Ah, uh, she means well, but she's not really a fan of how much I need to see her, Izuku admitted. He gently rubbed the back of his head, wincing a bit. Man, that cane hurts Mina giggled at this, causing a little red to seep into the boy's cheeks. However, he found himself laughing as well. The situation wasn't exactly funny, per se, but it just felt good to laugh after what they had been through. Izuku's laughter stopped as he glanced at his bedridden friend's cast. Mina also quieted down as she noticed where he was looking. Laughter or not, the incident at the mall was still fresh on both of their minds. How how is it Izuku asked. This Mina moved her right hand slightly. Well, it still kind of hurts. And it feels really stiff. But it's definitely getting better. Izuku recalled how her hand looked before the ambulance had taken her, and winced. Mina put on a tough face then, but she had clearly been in a lot of pain. Hearing it was getting better was a big relief. She yawned. Recovery girl's cork sure is something. Izuka could tell by her tone that she was tired, a side effect of the healing cork she had been administered. He was all too familiar with its effects. Yeah, it really is. The two were quiet for another few seconds as Mina continued to look at her cast. That man she started. Shigaraki, right as cork as she shuddered as she recalled the feeling of her skin literally crumbling away. I guess I'm lucky mine countered it pretty well. She thought back to how quickly the villain had reacted and countered her attack, and how easily he had overpowered her. She was no match for him, and if her quirk hadn't been able to get him off like that. She looked up at Izuku, his gaze was now directed at the floor. I'm sorry, he said quietly. Mina raised an eyebrow. What are you apologizing for? For putting you through all that. He continued to look down. For not being able to fight him off. For for not being able to stop him from hurting you. The green-haired boy's hands gripped the side of the bed tightly as he started trembling. If I had just been a little faster, maybe. Midoriya. He felt a hand grab the top of one of his as Mina spoke. He looked up to see she was sitting up, giving him a somewhat stern look. Don't you dare start blaming yourself for this. It sounded more like an order than anything. I was the one who charged in like an idiot, remember she looked back at a cast. And this is what I get for not thinking. It was a stupid, reckless move, just like recovery girl said. But when I saw you in trouble like that, I just it was like my body just started moving on its own. Her look shot back at Izuku. And you know what I'm glad it did. Because I think my right hand's a little less important than your life Izuku was taken aback by Mina's sudden intensity. So don't you go saying sorry to me. If anything, I should be the one apologizing for making you worry so much. There was another period of silence as Mina finished her speech. She continued to stare at Izuku with a fiery look in her eyes. Right? So Izuku caught himself. Got it. He nodded. But at least let me say thank you. You saved my life, after all. The injured girl's look softened as she smiled. Ah, it was nothing I know you would have done the same thing for me. Izuku couldn't help but smile at this. She was right, of course had she been the one in danger, he would have sprung into action just like she did. He knew exactly what she meant when she said her body had moved on its own, it was something he had experienced many times in the past. It was a trait that, as All Might once told him, all great heroes shared. Mina really was something. As he smiled at the her, Izuku suddenly became aware of the warm grip on his hand. Mina seemed to notice it too as both looked down. Mina's hand was still grasping Izuku's. What's more, both hands had actually moved so that their fingers were interlocking and their palms were pressed together. As the two of them realized what they were doing, both immediately felt their faces catch fire. They quickly separated their hands, looking away from each other. Sorry to don't know how that happened Izuku squeaked, his tongue feeling like pretty. The eye, same. Mina wasn't doing much better. A deafening silence filled the room for a few moments. Anyways, two should probably let you rest Izuku managed to say as he made for the door. Yeah, sounds good. See you later, Ashido the stuttering boy opened the door, but stopped in the doorway. Who, I mean Mina. See you around Izuku. Hearing his first name only made his blush deepen. He left the room, shutting the door behind him. Mina let out a loud sigh as she laid back down in her bed. When had her hands done that why had their hands done that? Her mind drifted back to earlier that day, all those stray thoughts she kept having about Izuku. All these familiar feelings she had been having. Did she really have a crush on Izuku? The horned girl yawned again. Her eyes were getting heavy. She was way too tired to think about this kind of stuff right now. She let herself drift off to sleep. So, it doesn't hurt or nothing Kaminari asked. Not really, no. Mina replied, taking a bite of her food. So why do you gotta keep it on seems like a pain, Kirishima said, looking at his friend's hand. 
You telling me do you know hard it is to do anything without my good hand? Mina gestured to her body. I seriously couldn't even get dressed by myself. But I have to keep the cast on until tomorrow because it may not be done healing. You'd be surprised how long it takes all the skin on your hand to grow back. We're trying to eat here, Jiro reminded her, a somewhat disgusted look on her face. It was the day after the incident at the mall, and the true final day of school for the semester. While the hero course had finished its finals up two days ago, some of the other programs still had exams to finish. While these extra days hadn't been too work intensive for class 1A, Mr. Izawa wasn't one to let his students slack. Mina was currently enjoying lunch with Kirishina, Kaminari, Jiru, and Sayu, her normal group of friends. Like most of the class that day, they had all been talking about her and Midoriya's encounter with Shigaraki, and the injury Mina had sustained as a result. While the pink-haired girl was still slightly shaken by her fight with the villain, she was more than willing to talk about it. She was going to be a hero, after all, and dangerous situations like that were going to be a frequent occurrence. But still, a lot sure had happened yesterday. After her nap in the hospital, some members of the police had come by to question her about the incident, as well as give a brief lecture about public quirk use. While they were willing to accept her the use of her quirk against her assailant as self-defense, her using it to slide down the railing was a little more problematic. In the end, she hadn't caused any real damage so they let it go, but she had been issued a stern warning nonetheless. Frankly, Mina found the whole thing to be ridiculous. She and Midoriya could have been killed, and the police were concerned that she dirtied up a railing. Afterwards, her family had shown up to bring her home. She was simultaneously scolded for her rash behavior, commended for her courage, and coddled for being okay in the end, which had made for a crazy evening. And of course, there was him. As her friends went on about a cast, Mina found herself looking over at the table Midoriya was sitting at. He was currently chatting with Iida, Yuraka, and Todoroki, as usual. She sighed to herself as she gazed at the boy she had fallen for. Yes, Mina had thought a lot about Midoriya last night after their moment in the hospital room. Despite only really knowing him for about two days, she had come to accept that she was starting to develop feelings for her new friend. Whether they had come from her appreciation for the compassion he showed her in the classroom that day, her admiration for him after hearing about his past, or the fact that she just found him so damn cute, she wasn't sure. Likely all of the above. It made her giddy just thinking about it. Mina had had a few crushes before, but those were way back when she didn't fully understand what they meant. Those had gone away as quickly as they came. This though Mina wasn't so sure. And she had no idea what to do. It was why she hadn't gone over to sit with him. In fact, she had avoided him most of the day. Hey, you still with us Kirishima waved a hand in front of Mina's face. And what crap, had he seen her sorry, Kinda spaced out there didn't I? Yeah, and more than usual, the Redit joked. We were just talking about our summer plans. We got a week before camp, after all. Yeah, I plan to head up the beach a bunch next week. Maybe pick up a hot babe or two, Kaminari said with a grin. Yeah, I bet they'll love your hold ruling idiot routine. Total chick magnet, Jiri chimed in, doing her best impression of the electric cork user after his brain fried. Oh shut up he snapped. I'll mostly be hitting up the gym. A man's gotta stay in shape, after all. Kirishima pointed at himself with his thumb, smiling. I'll probably be helping out at home. My parents need all the help they can get, Ribbit's eye croaked. I'm actually hitting up a concert with some old friends this week. We got front row seats and everything the excitement was clear in Jiru's voice. Whoa, that sounds awesome Kaminari turned to Mina. How about you, Mina? Oh, well I was thinking I should catch up on studying. The whole table fell silent as they got to the pink girl. What? Come again Kaminari turned his head. Yeah, ah uh, what Jiru almost looked concerned something was wrong with her friend. I think that villain's quirk might have messed with your brain or something. Sayu sounded as if genuinely believed what she just said. Mina's cheeks turned magenta. I, is it really that strange she asked, crossing her arms as she looked away from the group slightly. From you yeah, it totally is Kaminari exclaimed. I don't even think you have any notes to study with, Sayu noted, a finger on her chin. Knowing her it wasn't meant to come off as an insult, but everyone laughed nonetheless. Kirishima remained silent. And knock it off already Mina grumbled. Look, these finals made me realize I need to quit slacking off so much. It's not exactly fun being at the bottom of the class, you know. I can understand that. Sai nodded. Hey Kaminari, maybe you should study too. You're not doing that much better than Mina, Ribbit. Hey don't turn this on me the brunette yelled at the frog girl. But maybe she's got a point, he admitted with a sigh. Before the conversation could continue, the bell rang, indicating lunch was over. The students quickly finished off the rest of their food before getting up to return to class. As Mina stepped into the hallway, though, she felt a finger tap her on the shoulder. She turned to see Kirishima standing behind. Hey, can I talk to you for a sec? Izuka yawned. The day was only halfway over, but he was past ready to go home. He took another bite of his rice. Are you sure you're alright? Midori Iida asked, worrying his voice. You don't look well. Yeah, I'm fine Izuku yawned again. Just didn't really get a lot of sleep, that's all. 
Yeah, I'd probably have trouble sleeping too after what you went through, Yuraka pointed out, frowning. God, I can't imagine how scary that must have been. I still can't believe such a high-profile villain was just out in public like that, Todoroki said, looking down at the table. His eyes narrowed. Any one of us could have been taken by him. It was an unsettling thought. Let us focus on the positives. Both Midoriya and Ishido are alright, after all, Iida reminded his classmates. Mina. Izuku found his mind wandering at the mention of the girl. While meeting Shigaraki again had certainly been part of why he had trouble sleeping, what really kept the one for all inheritor up last night was her. After that awkward moment in the hospital, he hadn't been able to get Mina out of his head for the rest of the day. Even now, just thinking about their hands holding each other like that made his chest tighten. How long had their hands been like that? Why were they like that? Why did it take so long to notice those questions plagued Izuku throughout yesterday, as well as many others? For instance, why he kept finding himself just staring at her. Like in the hospital right before they noticed they were holding hands. Or at the mall, when he was practically hypnotized by her eyes. Or right now, in the cafeteria. Izuku became aware of the fact that he had been looking over at Mina, since this train of thought started. Izuku quickly turned back to the table, feeling slightly ashamed. Why did this keep happening? Was this how Mineta started out? Was Izuku's constant ogling a sign that he was turning into some kind of gross pervert? He had so little experience when it came to dealing with girls. Maybe this was actually a normal thing. Maybe every guy secretly thought this stuff. Deku. Ah, Izuku jumped as he felt someone tap his shoulder. Yuraka pulled her hand back, a bit surprised by his reaction. Todoroki and Iida friends simply stared in confusion at their jumpy friend. Um, Izuku cleared his throat, trying to hide his blush. Sorry, what? Just making sure you're still here, sleepyhead, Yuraka joked, laughing a bit. The group was pretty used to Izuku's awkward behavior, so they ultimately didn't think much of his strange reaction. The yeah, I, yeah, just still thinking about yesterday, I guess. Ah, that explains why you were looking so intently at Ishido, Iida said, stroking his chin in thought. Izuku's eyes went wide. He'd noticed it's only natural you'd be worried about her after seeing what happened firsthand, after all. Well, that wasn't false. But at least he hadn't assumed it was something less noble. Actually, I wanted to ask you Araka spoke up. Why were you hanging out with Mina anyway? I didn't think you two really knew each other that well. There was something strange about her tone. Izuku froze up. Well he scrambled to think of an explanation. Yeah you see, um, I was kind of having trouble finding my way around, and, um, Ashido just sort of bumped into me and decided to, well, show me around. Technically, he was telling the truth. I would not say it's so unusual, Iida added. Ashido is a very sociable person, after all. And our class gets along very well with each other. Well, perhaps with the exception of Bakugu. Fair enough, Yuraka seemed satisfied with this. Izuka couldn't help but wonder why she had brought it up. He supposed it was a little strange to see him and Mina together. However, thinking about Yuraka made Izuku realize something. All those weird thoughts he was just having about Mina he had never thought about Yuraka like that, despite how long he had known her. He had initially been nervous around her just because she was one of the first girls heck, first friends he had really talked to, but as they became friends, he found himself not thinking much of it. But even when he was first getting to know her, he had never thought about her the same way he was thinking about Mina now. And outside that one time he saw he saw Yuraka's costume for the first time, he had never looked at her the way he kept catching himself looking at Mina. Really, he hadn't thought about this stuff with any of the other girls in his class. What did this mean what was going on he couldn't possibly know, that couldn't be right. The bell ringing pulled him back to reality. Shaking his head, he cleaned up his spot at the table and headed to class, his mind still full of questions. The hallway was bustling as the students of UA began returning to their classes. Hiroshima and Mina were standing off to the side by a window, out of the way of the school traffic. So what's up Mina asked. Hiroshima hadn't said much after asking to talk he had simply told her to follow him out in the hall to where they were standing now. The Redeed looked at his middle school friend for a second, trying to think of how to approach the topic he wanted to discuss. He quickly settled on his usual style. Is there something going on between you and Midoriya? That style of course being as direct as possible. Mina's brain took a moment to fully comprehend what he just asked. What she shouted, causing a few nearby students to glance over. She covered her mouth, waiting for them to look away before continuing. What are you talking about her face was a deep magenta. Come on, Mina, you're not exactly being subtle about it. You've been sneaking looks at the guy all day, he said, crossing his arms. Mina looked down. So he had seen all that. Plus, you getting all defensive when I asked why you were with him yesterday was a little weird. He also couldn't help but feel Midoriya had something to do with her sudden interest in academics, but he didn't feel the need to bring it up. Even if there was, why do you care clearly, Mina was annoyed with him butting into her private business. I know, I know, this is personal stuff I'm asking about. The sharp toothed boy leaned against the wall. It's why I didn't want to bring it up around the others. But you seemed off today, so I just wanted to make sure everything's okay. 
Venus sighed. He had all the tact of, well, a rock, but she had known Kirishima long enough to understand he was asking this, because he cared about his friend. Yeah, everything's fine, she said softly. And well, no, there isn't anything going on with me and Midoriya. She took a deep breath. But, you want there to be something, right Mina blushed again. Yeah, he knew it. I know, it's stupid. Stupid what nah. Just a little surprising, that's all, he assured his pink friend. I mean, you've barely spoken to the guy. Well, I'm still sort of figuring it out. But this all started after our finals. Mina decided talking about this with someone might help her get a better idea of what to do. Kirishima seemed to wince at the mention of the exams. He had failed as well, after all. I was not happy with myself, to say the least. She thought back to that dark dark place she had been after the practical. How worthless she felt. How hopeless she felt. Not just about the exam, just about everything. I didn't feel like I had made any progress this semester, and when I saw how far everyone else had come I just I was starting to think I should just drop out. She shuddered she never wanted to experience those feelings ever again. Shit I wasn't too proud of myself either, but he could just tell by her tone how awful she must have felt. But, wouldn't you know it, someone managed to snap me out of it. Let me guess, Midori right Kirishima couldn't help but smile. The little guy had a way of being able to fire up his classmates. He was starting to understand. That sounds like him, alright. Mina chuckled. Yeah. She paused. He he shared some pretty personal stuff me about himself. Made me realize I shouldn't be giving up over a couple bad grades. She didn't feel like it was appropriate to go into detail about what Izuku had told her. Fortunately, Kirishima didn't press. After that, I decided I wanted to get to know him a little more. As a friend. She rubbed her arm. At least, at first. But I'm starting to realize I might want to be more than just his friend. You might Kirishima raised an eyebrow. Like I said, I'm still sort of figuring stuff out. She sighed again. I'm just not sure what to do. Why not just ask him out the Redeed asked without a second thought. SSHH Mina rapidly waved her hands downwards, looking around to make sure nobody had heard him. Tell the whole school, why don't you? Sorry, sorry, he apologized, a sheepish smile on his face. Mina couldn't help but feel he had done that to mess with her. And I can't just do that we've only known each other for like two days now, and well, you know how Midoriya is. I don't think I can be that direct with him without freaking him out. Izuku's social awkwardness and tendency to overreact in emotional situations were well documented in class 1A besides, I'm still not entirely sure how I'm feeling. Like, I'm pretty sure I like him but I want to spend a bit more time with him first. Just to be sure it's real, you know. Er, yeah, sure Kirishima wasn't exactly sure what she meant, but he was never good at dealing with emotional stuff. Still, he wanted to help his friend. Whom he snapped his fingers as an idea formed in his head. Why not ask him to help you study this week Mina turned her head slightly, confused. I mean, you said you wanted to focus on school stuff right before the camp, right Midori is a pretty smart guy, I'm sure he'd be a big help. Mina blinked a few times. That actually wasn't a bad idea. She could work on getting her grades up for next semester, and simultaneously spend some alone time with Izuku to get a better grasp on her feelings for him. Then, when the time was right, she could make her move. She beamed. It was the perfect plan. Holy crap, you're a genius, horn buddy she knocked on his head. Guess you're not as dumb as you look. Hey, like you're one to talk, Kirishima remarked, giving her a light push. He was also smiling, though. Okay, okay maybe I can talk to him after class, and no, shit Mina looked at her phone. We're gonna be late, come on she had a feeling Mr. Izawa wouldn't care if it was the last day of class, late was late to him. Kirishima watched her take off. He laughed to himself. Mina and Midoriya, ha can't say I saw that one coming. He silently wished his friend luck he wasn't even sure if Midoriya knew what dating meant. Hopefully things worked out. Or hopefully not. Kirishima growled, knocking his head back against the wall slightly, as he forced that ugly thought out of his head. Come on, man, don't be like that. He started walking to class. Midoriya was a good guy, Kirishima knew that. Despite his normally timid demeanor, he had a hero's heart. Possibly more so than anyone else in the class. Whatever he and Mina talked about the other day, it had obviously made her see the little guy in a new light. He'd take good care of her. Besides, Kirishima was a man. And there was nothing manly about being jealous. A cheer could be heard throughout the entire school as the final bell rang. The semester had officially come to an end, and the students couldn't be more excited. I'll see you all back here in a week. In the meantime, enjoy your summer, Mr. Izawa finished as he began to put away his materials. Most of class 1A was already out of their seats as he spoke, eager to get moving. Izuku exhaled with relief as he finished putting his notes away. This day had been rough due to his lack of sleep, and he was ready to get home. The fact that he was finally getting a small break from the wonderful insanity that was UA was also helping his mood. The question was, what was he going to do with his free time as he made his way out of the classroom, he pondered his possible options. Of course, there was training. Just because he was off didn't mean he could slack on that. 
If he wanted to master one for all he couldn't afford to laze around, after all. But he couldn't just spend the whole week doing that. He couldn't imagine trying to train his quirk for a week straight that sounded like pure hell. He had friends now, too. It was difficult to imagine, but he might actually be able to spend time with other people outside school, like Ieda Uraka. Maybe even. Hey Midoriya. Mina. He had been too busy thinking about his plans to realize she had approached him. Naturally, her presence startled him slightly. Oh hi, Ashido, he greeted. Mina rolled her eyes. How many times do we have to go over this? Ooh, I meant Mina sorry. And what did I say about apologizing? Ah Sormfi slapped a hand over his mouth to shut himself up. Less than a minute of talking and she already had him acting like a nervous wreck. She really had a natural talent for it. Anyways he looked down at her right hand. How are you feeling? A lot better than yesterday, but this thing's still a huge pain. Can't wait to take it off tonight she muttered. It's pretty rough not being to use your dominant hand for stuff. But you'd know about that, wouldn't you she laughed, giving him a playful nudge in the arm with her elbow. For some reason, the brief contact made Izuku's hair stand on end. Ha ah, yeah, I guess I would. He had come to class in arm casts more times than he cared to remember. Best that's something else we have in common now Mino Shido and Izuku Midoriya, class 1A Brothers and Brockenerms the two of them laughed. Once again, Mina's bubbly personality had infected Izuku somewhat. She could always make him smile. Their laughter died down before Mina continued. So actually, I kinda had a favor I wanted to ask, if that's okay. She asked. I'm sure, what is it Izuku was a little uncertain given Mina's mischievous nature. Well, we've got a week before this camp thing, and well I kinda wanted to get a head start on catching up with school, she explained. Especially with these remedial classes I'll be doing. Gotta keep my mind sharp, you know she poked her forehead a few times. Izuku wasn't sure how this involved him, though he was glad to see she was still committed to improving her grades. But the thing is, I barely have any notes to go off. And I'm not exactly the brightest girl around, so she closed her eyes and put on a big smile. Would you maybe be willing to help me study pretty please? Izuku was thrown off by this. Him helping her study like, like tutoring her where would they study with the school closed a library a park one of their houses. As his imagination went haywire, the image of the two of them studying together in his room formed in his mind. The girl, alone in his room with him. Izuku face grew so hot he swore he could feel steam coming out of his ears. Midoriya, you're doing it again. Izuku had been vocalizing all his thoughts just now, mumbling them under his breath. A rather infamous habit. Thankfully he was never coherent enough that his words could be understood, but that didn't make him any less embarrassed. Watching his reaction to her question, Mina sighed. She had been afraid of this. Look, if you don't want to, I get it. Sorry he suddenly exclaimed. Despite his nervousness, Izuku wasn't opposed to the idea. He wanted to help however he could, and it would be a good mental workout for him. Too mean, I'd I'd be okay with it. Plus, spending more time with Mina appealed to him. Despite how worked up he could get around her, he was finding that being with her just put him in a good mood. Likely because of all the positivity she radiated. Because it couldn't be something else, right? He had only just started getting to know her. He couldn't possibly be feeling anything like that for her. That didn't happen to people you just started talking to, right? But wouldn't you want Somi and like Aoi Rose's help instead he admittedly had doubts about being a good tutor. Hey, she was helpful, don't get me wrong, but her place was way too flashy for me. Plus, she seemed more focused on being a good host than actually helping us study. Mina appreciated her classmates' help of course she had passed the written test thanks to the study sessions. But she wasn't thrilled about any Indian in study sessions with the rich girl. Besides, half the point of this was to get closer to Izuku. Oh? Well, alright then. When should we meet? Why don't we start tomorrow? Uh, so soon Izuku wasn't sure he could be mentally prepared by then. Well, we only have a week right can't afford to waste any time. She punched the air. Go beyond, and all that Izuku couldn't help but laugh a little at her gusto. Alright tomorrow. He had a feeling he was going to regret this. Sounds good she pulled out her phone. Now let's just exchange numbers so we can figure out. She trailed off as someone bumped into Izuku as they walked between the two friends. Hey, watch where you're fucking going, loser. A voice growled as they gave Izuku a Stanfriendly push with their shoulder before continuing forward. Mina's eyes narrowed. Akigu. While Mina had never really liked the class's resident hothead, she found herself disliking him even more after Izuku had told her about his past. How he had been bullied throughout his childhood for his supposed quirkless nature. Akigu had called him stuff like quirkless loser before. They clearly knew each other before coming to UA, but Mina had never really thought about their relationship before. Now she understood he was one of Izuku's bullies from his past. Just thinking about the fact that a guy who spent his time picking on someone like Izuku was here at UA pissed her off. He wasn't a hero, he was just a jerk with a strong quirk. Why don't you watch where you're going? Akigu stopped dead in his tracks. From the corner of her eye, Mina saw Izuku freeze up as well. The explosive student turned his head so one eye was looking at her. 
the fuck you just say he snarled with a glare. He sounded equal parts surprised and angry, as if he couldn't comprehend the idea of someone calling him out. Mina, it's alright Izuku got between the two of them, not wanting to see this escalate. Let's just go, okay. Mina stayed quiet, but glared right back at Bakugu with equal intensity. They stared each other down for a few seconds before the blonde turned back around and kept walking, but not before sending a middle finger in Mina's direction. Mina growled. Why do you take that from him she asked. It's a long story Kakin and I, well he wasn't always like that. Mina had a very hard time believing that. Yes don't worry, okay it doesn't really bother me anymore. Anymore. That's the part that Mina had a problem with. But if he insisted, fine, she'd drop it. She sighed. That asshole had completely spoiled her good mood. So, um you said something about phone numbers. Oh, right. Mina decided to forget about Bakugu for the moment as she opened her phone. The two exchanged numbers. Of course, Izuku started to freak out a bit as he realized he had just been given a girl's phone number. Well, I'll see tomorrow then. We can talk later about a time and place. Bye Mina walked off, leaving Izuku to stare at his phone in wonder. She had considered asking to walk with him to the train station, but decided to give him some breathing room. She had to be patient with him, after all. Izuku looked at the number on his phone for another minute, before finally accepting that, yes, Mina Oshido had given him her number. He had no idea what to expect tomorrow. As he went back to the main menu of his phone, his eyes widened when he saw the time. Crap, my train's gonna be here soon he took off in a sprint, not wanting to have to wait for the next ride home. Izuku was starting to think he had made a mistake. Sitting at the desk in his room, the boy poured over the notes he had taken on various subjects this past semester, making sure he had a good enough grasp on the material. Note-taking had been more or less a hobby for Izuku most of his life, so his notebooks were crammed with information. He had a tendency to write down just about anything the teachers brought up, just in case it was important. He yawned. It was about 11pm, and the tired team was actually currently in his pajamas. But despite how tired he had been all day, he had been unable to fall asleep. Just like last night, a swarm of thoughts buzzed in his head, preventing him from dozing off completely. Of course, they were mostly about Mina. His agreement to help his pink friend study tomorrow was the main source of his insomnia, and the reason he was looking over his notes and books. The more he thought about the whole situation, the less confident he became. And tutor Mina he had enough difficulty having regular conversations her. But now he would need to understand how to clearly explain things so she could understand. He couldn't just hand her his notes and expect her to learn everything, after all. Would he be able to answer whatever questions she had? Could he explain some of the more complicated stuff in an easy to understand way? Questions like these were making him doubt himself. Mina was going to be relying on him to help her, and Izuku just wasn't sure how reliable he was. He sighed. Maybe he should call this off. He took out his phone and pulled up Mina's number, his thumb hovering over the call button. She was probably still awake. Mina, I'm really sorry, but I'm having second thoughts about this Izuku practiced what he was going to say. He tried to prepare himself for her response as he moved to head call. The phone started ringing. Midori her voice could be heard on the other line. Didn't think you'd still be awake. What's up? Ooh, ooh well I just wanted to wanted to talk about tomorrow. Aha he took a quick breath, trying to build up the courage to call off their plans. He could already hear her disappointment. Izuku suddenly found himself thinking of their chance encounter the other day. He vividly remembered Mina's cold, depraved demeanor, and how much it had disturbed him. All that disappointment and self-doubt. Hello. He hesitated. If he told her he had changed his mind, would she think it was because he didn't have faith in her, that he thought trying to help her improve was a waste of his time, that everything he told her that day wasn't really true? No. Izuku had faith in Mina. It was why he said what he said to her that day. He shared things he hadn't shared with anyone else because he wanted to show that he believed in her, and that she needed to believe in herself. The fact that she was trying to improve her grades, showed that she had taken his words to heart. Mina had come to him asking for help. She had done so because she trusted him to be able to teach her. And if that was the case, he needed to believe her trust in him was well placed. You fall asleep on me, man. Ah oh, sorry, I got distracted, he fibbed. No kidding. So what about tomorrow? Amizuku needed to think of something to say. I was just wondering what subjects you wanted to focus on he was legitimately curious. I haven't really thought about it. Mina didn't seem to suspect anything, which Izuku was grateful for. To be honest, I'm kinda sorta struggling with everything she clearly didn't sound proud of this fact. But well then, we can figure it out when we meet. The pajama clad boy yawned again. Sounds good. Anyways, you sound exhausted get some sleep, will you I can't have my teacher napping on the job tomorrow. Laughter could be heard from her end. Izuku was glad she wasn't here to see him blush. Yeah, I got it. Well, um, talk to you tomorrow. Yep. Night, buddy. Night, Mina. He hung up before realizing he had actually used her first name without realizing it. He instinctively put a hand over his mouth, despite nobody being around. 
Despite the fact that she had insisted he call her that, Izuku just wasn't used to being so casual with someone, aside from maybe Kakin. It was unlike him to use first names without thinking about it like that, which is why he was so surprised by it. He would speculate on why he had done it, but now that he had cleared his self-doubts about tutoring from his mind, his lack of sleep was rapidly catching up to him. He let out yet another yawn and got out of his chair, walking to his bed before practically falling into it. As he drifted off to sleep, the last thing to pass through his mind was the image of Mina's smiling face. A sudden feeling of discomfort roused Mina from her slumber. She slowly opened her eyes, only to shut them even tighter as she found herself blinded by a flash of light. Stupid sun, she grumbled, rolling over. A ray of sunlight was shining through a gap in her window's blinds, and just so happened to shine right on her face. Why do you have to be so bright the grogginess in her voice was clear. After unsuccessfully attempting to go back to sleep, she decided she may as well get out of bed. Sitting up with a yawn, Mina stretched her arms. She looked to the side of her bed at a clock. 1000 AM. Well, she'd slept in later. Mina was, clearly, not a morning person. Sleeping in meant she wasn't completely non-functional like she tended to be during school, but she was still quite groggy. The covers were halfway off the bed, with only her left leg actually under them. It was a fairly common occurrence Mina tended to get warm at night. For similar reasons, she was also wearing nothing but her undergarments. Again, fairly common for her. With a bit of effort, she swung her legs off the side of the bed, her feet finding the fuzzy pink slippers she kept there. Slowly, she rose to her feet. Her usual energy was replaced with a mild lethargy. She dragged her tired self to her closet, grabbing a purple bathrobe and covering herself with it, as well as some flannel pants. Once she was decent, she made her way out of her bedroom and downstairs. It sounded like nobody else was home. Mina supposed she should be thankful her family had let her sleep in. She entered the kitchen and went about making herself breakfast, along with a sizable cup of coffee. As she moved around, she noticed a sticky note on the coffee maker. Mina, I went to take Makoto to a doctor's appointment. We'll be running errands for a few hours after that, so you'll have the place to yourself for a while. Call me if you plan on leaving the house. Love, mom. And written just below this in much cruder writing. And you better not touch my games, or else you'll be in huge trouble, Makoto. Mina rolled her eyes. He was really taking every opportunity to rub the fact that he now owned all her games in her face. Mina's parents were, for the most part, pretty lax. Most people probably wouldn't be surprised to hear this, given her personality. That said, they had their limits. Mina flunking her exam was one of them, and as punishment, she had been forced to give Makoto, her younger brother, all of her vidigans, until she got her grades up. Due to the fact that she rarely let him touch her stuff, he was taking full advantage of the situation, taunting and annoying her about it in all the ways only a little brother could. While she was already motivated enough to do better in school, getting her games back and shutting him up certainly helped. Regardless, with her mom and brother off with appointments and errands, and her dad out of town for work, Mina was left alone. She debated going into Makoto's room and messing up all his saves, just to spite him. But of course, that'd get in her in real hot water. Maybe put all the discs in the wrong cases if he complained, she'd just lie and say it wasn't being disorganized. Their mom would probably believe it. As she sipped her coffee, pondering ways to mess with the little devil that was her brother, she felt her phone buzz. Taking it out, her face brightened as she saw who it was. Hello Mina, are you awake? A text from Izuku read. Mina had temporarily forgotten her plans with the boy due to her half awake state. She started typing back. Barely lol. Oh, sorry did I wake you? She chuckled at his worried response. Even in text form, Izuku was just so Izuku. Nara good. Just woke up like 10 minutes ago is all something told her that her had been up for a lot longer, he seemed like an early riser. Anyways what's up? Well, I just wanted to try to figure out a time and place for us to meet today. I'm helping my mom around the house for a few hours, but I should be available around 1. Mina couldn't help but laugh at the contrast between Izuku's messages and hers. She could just imagine him sitting there, meticulously typing his texts out so they looked proper. Very different from her use as few keys as possible style. He was such a dork. But an adorable dork. Adorkable, if you would. Disregarding her amusement at the formality of his texts, Mina tried to think of a good place to meet. Well we could do my place. I'm home alone at the moment. Though it could get awkward if my family comes home to find me alone with a guy from school. In truth, Mina didn't want to study here. She had no idea when her family would get home, and it would be impossible to focus once they returned. But she knew mentioning the prospect of them being alone in her house would get him rattled. She pictured him once again, his face turning bright red upon reading her message, hands trembling as he read her message. Ah, Nifk. I did it, Maya. I didn't mean to send that. That. Mina smirked, the string of erratic responses confirming her vision. I'm just kidding, dude. Chill, she decided to spare him further torment and ask about his place. His next response took a little time. There's a library a few blocks away from my apartment. We could meet there if you want. A library seemed perfect. 
Sounds good to me. How about 130? That would be fine. I'll send you the address. I'll see you then, Nina. Saya Midori of the pink teen put down her phone, returning to her breakfast. She noticed he had actually called her Minu without needing a reminder. Progress. 130. It was 10.30 now, and she wanted to give herself about an hour to get to the library just to be safe. So, she had about two hours to kill. More importantly, two hours to mentally prepare herself. While she had every intention of focusing on getting some actual studying done, Mina wanted to use this chance to get closer to her new crush. The more time she spent thinking about Izuku, the more certain she was about her feelings for him. Of course, that just made her more nervous about the whole thing. Did he feel similarly about her she couldn't be sure. He got easily flustered around her, yes, but that could be chalked up to his natural awkwardness around girls. According to Yoraka, he had acted very similar towards her at first, yet the two of them seemed to be nothing more than good friends at this point. She obviously couldn't ask him about his feelings directly. A question like do you like me would likely make the poor boy faint on the spot. Confessing her own feelings would likely cause a similar result. At the same time, in the unlikely event he actually did feel something for her, Mina doubted he would ever bring it up. She had to make the first move one way or another. She needed to be subtle. Make an occasional comment or gesture that hinted at her attraction towards him. Unfortunately, subtlety was never Mina's strong suit. And what if he just didn't get it, she didn't want to make things awkward between them. Her biggest fear was losing him as a friend because of all this. But at the same time, she was the kind of person who couldn't just bury her feelings. Just trying to ignore this crush was not an option. The robed girl sighed, rubbing her temples. It was too early to think about all this. As she finished her breakfast, she contemplated what to do for the next few hours. She eventually decided to go for a run to at least try to clear her head for a bit. Today was certainly going to be interesting. Izuku stood outside the library, nervously looking around. It was just past 130, and Mino would be arriving any minute. He was wearing a blue shirt and tan shorts due to the warm weather, with a backpack stuffed full of study materials. He couldn't help but think that just one year ago, he would have found the amount of weight currently on his back unbearable. But after his training with All Might, it didn't feel remotely heavy. It gave him a sense of pride, something rare for the one for all inheritor. Unfortunately, that didn't help calm his nerves much. He was still quite anxious about the prospect of tutoring someone. But he had told Mina he would do it, and he intended to go through with it. Izuku felt his chest tighten slightly as he spotted a pink figure in the distance. Oh god, she's here he muttered. No matter how much he tried to prepare himself for this, the fact was he was spending his afternoon alone with a girl. Spending time with Mina at the mall was one thing that had at least been a class trip. But this was just the two of them, alone. For whatever reason, that made it feel more personal to Izuku. More intimate. Naturally, that was doing wonders for his anxiety. Calm down, he told himself, taking a deep breath. You're just here to study, that's all. There's nothing else going on here. Just a couple friends studying together. Guys and girls hang out like this all the time, it's nothing weird. You really like talking to yourself, don't you mean his voice interjected. Izuku had apparently been lost in his thoughts long enough for Mina to reach him. Flinching a bit at the sudden voice, Izuku quickly turned away from his friend to hide the embarrassment on his face. It's it's an old habit. He turned to face her, only to immediately look away again. Mina was currently wearing a lime green tank top and white shorts that went about halfway to her knees. The outfit was quite snug, and there was a gap between her shirt and shorts, leaving her midriff exposed. A lot of skin was showing, in other words. Izuku's face was heating up. What's the matter like what you see Mina's teasing voice asked, raising his body temperature even more. What was happening? I this was getting ridiculous. He needed to snap out of it. Just turn around and don't think about it, that's all. Mustering up his courage, he turned back to face her, doing everything in his power to keep his eyes on her face. Did you find this place alright he asked, trying to completely steer the conversation away from the subject of her clothing. Yeah, sorry I'm a little late. Train station was crowded. Mina could clearly see Izuku was trying as hard as he could to keep eye contact, with a hint of a blush still on his face. While she had primarily chosen this outfit due to the hot weather, getting this kind of reaction from him was a nice bonus. She decided not to mess with him at the moment. Anyway, shall we get started, teach. Teach. You know, teacher should I call you Mr. Midoriya Drive? Deku maybe she giggled at her alliterations. Or how about? Thus call me Izuku, please Izuku suddenly blurted out. Both were silent for a moment. Mina cocked her head. Really she asked. Nobody called Izuku by his first name, to her knowledge. Yuraka and Bakugu called him Deku, sure, but that was it. Mina had no problem with people using her first name, but she was a lot less informal than the boy standing in front of her. She was surprised, to say the least. Well I let me call you by your first name, right besides, you called me that a couple times now Izuku wasn't really sure why he was saying this. He tried to stay formal with even close friends. 
Yet those few times Mina consciously or not had called him Izuku, he had felt something. He felt an awkward embarrassment for being addressed so informally, of course, but there was something else. Whatever it was, it made him happy. Whatever that feeling was, he wanted more of it. Well alright, Izuku as she said with a smile. There it was. That warm tingly feeling in his chest, different from the usual tightness he experienced when he got nervous. Izuku couldn't help but smile at the sensation. He had no idea why Mina addressing him by his first name made him feel this way. Well, there was one possible reason. But Izuku refused to even think about that. Once again, there were just a couple of friends hanging out at the library. Nothing else. Well, Mina asked. Oh, right let's go find a spot, Izuku suggested. The two entered the library. Mina sat down as Izuku began unpacking his backpack. The two had found a small reading room that was vacant, and promptly taken it. It had a small table with some chairs in the middle, making it an ideal spot. Alright, Izuku said as he finished organizing everything, taking a seat next to Mina. On what do you want to start with he found it a little easier to keep calm, now that he could focus on something other than the girl next to him. Mina leaned back, putting a finger to her chin. Well well like I said, I'm pretty behind on just about everything, but maybe math it was quite possibly the toughest subject for her, and she wanted to start strong. Okay, we can do that. Any particular things you had in mind matrices vectors conic sections maybe Mina stared blankly at him. Um you do remember what that all is, right? Which one of those was the stuff with triangles I got a couple notes on that stuff in here somewhere Mina flipped through her math notes. Um that's trigonometry, Mina Izuku tried to hide the exasperation he was feeling. Mina snapped her fingers. Right, right. She reached the end of her notes. Weird, I swear I wrote some of that down. Izuka couldn't help but notice she only had notes for about 20 pages or so. Can I see your notes maybe I'm just forgetting exactly what that was. Izuka reluctantly handed her his math notebook, watching as she started reading through it. He noticed her expression change to one of confusion as she turned several pages. After several more she almost looked scared. Ha, you um you've got a lot written down here, don't you her voice sounded a little weaker than usual. It seemed neither of them had fully appreciated just how much work this was going to be for both of them. Well I am bottom of the class for a reason Mina said with a big sigh, looking a bit disheartened. Don't think I retained a bunch from those cram sessions for the finals either. Don't worry about it, Izuku tried to assure her. We just need to spend some extra time on stuff, that's all. This was going to challenge him, but he wasn't going to let that deter him. Yeah, I know. Mina managed to smile. She wasn't letting this get to her either. Besides, this just means there's nowhere to go but up, right she joked, laughing. Alright. That was certainly one way of looking at it. Izuka couldn't help but admire Mina's way of seeing things. She always tried to focus on positives, even in what to most people seemed like a bleak situation. It reminded him of All Might in a lot of ways. It was one of the many things he found so attractive about her. Well, why don't we start with trigonometry then the green-haired boy suggested, trying to ignore that last thought. Besides, they had a lot of work to do. Sounds like as good a place as any. Let's get started Izuku. The classmate ignored that family familiar feeling in his chest and opened his notebook. It hadn't even been an hour, and the two students had already hit a wall. Seriously how is that wrong she shouted, slamming her hand on the table. Izuku winced at the sudden outburst. His strategy had been to review each section with Mina, then give her a few practice problems to try. At first, things seemed to be going okay, Mina seemed to have an easier time following his lesson in any inn setting than a classroom full of students. But she quickly started to lose focus. No matter how much she wanted to pay attention, something about hearing Izuku go on about triangles just made her eyes glaze over. It was almost like an automatic response her brain had developed to escape boring classwork. And boy was it boring. Mina wanted to learn, she really did but she couldn't get past the fact that she had just listened to someone talk about calculating the length of a triangle side for about 5 minutes. What did any of that have to do with being a hero? It only got worse from there. Mina hated math not just because it was boring, but because it was hard. She had tried solving 4 different problems now, and had yet to get a single one right. She was starting to get frustrated, to say the least. Ah it's okay, we can come back to that one. Just try the next. Stop. Mina looked at him. This obviously isn't working. She sighed loudly, putting an elbow on the table and resting her cheek in her hand. Mina had known this wasn't going to be easy, but the fact that she was blundering this much this early was discouraging, to say the least. Sorry, I probably explained this stuff poorly. Do you want to go over it again? Mina shook her head. That's not the problem. You're doing great, really. Just I can't bring myself to give a damn about this. She sat up, throwing her arms up as she exclaimed this. Like, why should it matter whether or not I can calculate a hypotenuse that has nothing to do with hero work? Like, I get knowing hero law and even history stuff. But when am I going to use math to fight a villain? Izuku hated seeing Mina upset. She was clearly trying, but she had made a habit of, for lack of a better term, slacking off in school. Breaking it was going to take some effort. 
he had to think of something to say. Half a teacher's job was to motivate their students, after all. Um if that's the problem, maybe try thinking about it differently he quietly suggested. Mina looked back at him, a little confused. Like, um, he stalled for a few seconds as he pieced together what he was trying to say. Don't focus so much on the subject material itself, I guess. What Mina tilted her head. Izuku stroked his chin. Think about it like this. You don't lift weights because you expect to have to pick up 10 pound dumbbells somewhere, right? You do it to get stronger. Mina nodded. Well, he picked up the sheet of paper she had been working on. Think about this math problem like, like a weight for your brain. We're not being taught this because they want us to know everything about triangles well, unless you're going to be like a hero that helps with construction or something, because then you need to know that kind of stuff to properly. Izuku, slow down. Mina, then had turned her chair to face him, rested a hand on his shoulder. I think you're getting off topic. Izuku blushed slightly, partially due to his tangent, but also because of her touch. Right, anyways I think we're sorta of learning this stuff to train our brains. A hero needs to be able to think quickly and clearly in a high-pressure situation, and you need a strong brain to do that, he continued. Like, think of a fight with a villain like a math problem. Mina raised an eyebrow. Er just, let me explain, the villain is the problem, and the solution you're trying to find, is how to defeat them. And there are things you potentially know, just like how this problem gives you one of the triangle's sides and angles. The environment you're fighting in, your quirk, the villain's quirk, you need to be able to think of how to use that information to solve the problem. It wasn't the best analogy, but it was what he thought of. If that makes sense. Mina stared at him in wonder for a few seconds. Villain fights are math problems really she put a hand to her mouth as she tried and failed to contain her laughter. God, you're such a dork, Izuku the aforementioned dork's face turned red at this. The laughter continued for a good 15 seconds. He had to admit, when you really thought about it did sound pretty stupid. Hahu oh man. Mina slowly calmed down, wiping a tear that had formed in her eye. I really needed that, thanks. She cleared her throat. But I get what you're saying. I think. Mina had never thought about her schoolwork that way. School is a gym for your brain, basically. Yeah, makes sense. She recalled her practical final. When Nezu started his attack, she had completely panicked. Rather than try to analyze the situation, no doubt they would have remained calm, devised a plan to bypass the obstacles before them, and subdue their opponent, just like they did with Mr. Izawa. In the end, what Izuku was trying to say was learning about triangles would in fact make her a better hero, in a manner of speaking. Alright. She pounded a fist into her palm, a determined grin on her face. Let's take this from the top. I'm gonna whoop these trick problems but Suzuku smiled, happy his analogy ultimately worked. He flipped back to the start of the chapter they were on, confident that they could make progress this time. Um take that, Vilamina cried as she leapt out to her feet, triumphantly pointing at the paper in front of her. Woohoo another chapter down I'm on a roll, baby Izuku couldn't help but laugh at his friend's antics, he never expected to see someone get this excited over studying. The tutoring had become significantly more productive after Izuku gave his mental workout spiel. Mina was far more focused than when they first started, and even started taking some of her own notes. He still had to get her attention more than a few times Mina was still Mina, after all, but the distractions were few and far between. Once she was able to pay attention, solving the problems became much more doable. She still messed up here and there, but after carefully evaluating her work, she eventually found the right answer. As the study session went on, Mina's attitude improved more and more. The more they worked, the more consistently she was able to solve the practice problems. And the more answers she got right, the more fired up she got. Soon every right answer was cause for celebration, as Mina started treating them all like dangerous villains she had brought to justice. Evidently, she was really running with his silly analogy. Izuku couldn't help but feel proud, both of himself for successfully teaching, and of Mina for working so hard. He knew how tough it was to start climbing from the bottom, sharing that feeling was what brought the two of them together in the first place, after all. Alright, what's next Mina started shadowboxing come on, bring on the next chapter, coach. Her enthusiasm was admirable, but Izuku was starting to feel a bit tired. They had actually managed to cover a good deal of the math course at this point. How about we, uh, take a break he suggested. Mina stopped punching the air and gave him a surprised look. Huh really? Yeah, I think we could both use one. Mina stood there for a few seconds and then suddenly collapsed in her seat, exhaling dramatically. Good, my brain's starting to hurt. And I think I got a hand cramp from all this writing. She whined. In an instant, all of her energy had vanished. Izuka let out a small sigh. Mina's ability to completely change moods at the drop of a hat was quite a spectacle. What time is it, anyway? Oh, it's um, the unscorkless boy checked his phone he hadn't been keeping track of time much either. 530, he cried in surprise. They had been at this for about 4 hours now. Wow. Time flies when you're having fun, Hamina was curling and uncurling the finger on her right hand repeatedly to stretch them. She laughed, shaking her head. Things I thought I would never say about school. 
You were, oh you were really getting into it, Izuka commented, rubbing the back of his head. But, um I'm glad you were able to enjoy yourself. The horn girls smiled. Well I have you to thank for that. You're not half bad at this whole teaching thing. Izuku had a way of explaining the material that made Mina feel a bit more involved, as opposed to listening to a teacher just thrown on. You know just what to say to get me going, she added in a low voice, winking. Izuku froze up. Mina he stammered, questioning whether or not he heard that right. His eyes subconsciously started to drift downward. Fortunately, he caught himself before they got below Mina's neck. The tank top girl giggled. I'm kidding, Shishu should see your face, she said, shaking her head as she laughed at his embarrassment. Izuku was only half listening, though. He had managed to avoid having any more strange thoughts about Mina since they started studying, but hearing her talk like that, joke or not, had brought them back. He tried to force them out like usual, but this time it wasn't working. Several times he had questioned why he would think about her so much. Why he would act more awkward than normal whenever they were together. Why being around her put him in such a good mood, even with her constant teasing. Why he caught himself just staring at her so much. Why he would get those funny feelings in his chest whenever she would smile at him, or just call him Izuku. One possibility could answer all those questions, one he had refused to acknowledge. But the more he had tried to ignore it, the more apparent it had become. He still wasn't exactly sure, since he had never felt this way about anyone else, but he could couldn't deny it anymore. He had to admit that there was at least a chance that one possibility existed. Mina had stopped laughing at this point, and was now starting to regret what she said. Izuku appeared to have shut down because of her comment, he wasn't even really looking at anything now. The atmosphere had suddenly become very tense. She may have gone a bit too far, even if she wasn't being entirely serious. Sorry, that was a bit much. Even for me, she admitted. If Izuku heard her, he didn't acknowledge it. The pink girl sighed. Look, maybe we should call a quits for today. We've been at this all afternoon. Besides, I'm getting pretty hungry. She began putting her things away trying to do anything else would be awkward. She had been afraid of this happening. Subtlety was somewhat of an alien concept to her, especially when it came to expressing her feelings. Izuku's stomach was in knots. He wanted to say something, but his mouth refused to open. His mind was a maelstrom of emotions as he tried to come to terms with one simple terrifying fact. He liked Mina. As in, Mikulik Mina. At least, he think he did. It was the only thing that could explain all these feelings. Anyways, I'll see you later. Mina had finished packing and was getting up to leave. Wait Izuku stood. Mina whipped around, a bit surprised by him suddenly returning to life. His knees were shaking. His throat felt dry. His hair trade had probably doubled, at least. He had no idea why he shouted at. Internally, he was panicking. What did he do what should he say now Mina, this girl he just realized he probably had feelings for, simply stared at him, looked at him expectantly. Yes he needed to say something. Anything. About which I did his brain didn't have time to process the words before they spilled out of his mouth. Time seemed to freeze as Izuku realized what he just said. He mentally screamed. What had he done why did he say that, of all things he wanted to take it back, to say he misspoke, but the words caught in his throat. Mina took equally long to process his question. She played it back once, twice, three times in her head. Her eyes widened. Did did he just do what she think he did? Are you asking me out? She covered her mouth the second the words left her she hadn't meant to say that out loud. Izuku's stomach lurched. His entire body was on fire. This was it. He was actually going to die from embarrassment. Aang Bua has brain struggled to form words. But as much as he wanted to deny it, the answer to her question was the eyes. He squeezed his eyes shut, expecting a slap in the face for daring to ask something so insane. Instead, he felt a hand gingerly touch his shoulder. He opened one eye to see Mina standing a little closer now, smiling warmly at him. There was clearly embarrassment on her face as well. Well, I'd, I'd love to, she said quietly. She was still blown away by what was happening he had made the first move everything had happened so fast. Really the lobster in front of her stammered. Was he dreaming had he actually passed out? Yes, really. She looked down. I mean I was probably gonna ask you out eventually Izuku's eyes went wide. What but but why Mina rolled her eyes, though she kept smiling. Because I like you, silly. She said it like it was the most obvious thing in the world. Her heart was pounding in her chest. She had actually confessed. Izuku was certain he in a dream. Mina, a girl, the girl he just realized he had feelings for felt the same way. The girl actually liked him. He pinched himself a few times before realizing this was real. Now are we just gonna stand here gawking at each other, or get some food come on, I'm starving here. There are just a second Izuku, finally managed to regain control of himself, as he frantically started to pack up his belongings. A date. He was actually going on a date. Date. Izuku was going on a date. Izuku was actually going on a date. The inheritor of one for all's brain had been stuck on repeat for the last several minutes, as it tried to comprehend this information. It simply didn't seem possible no girl could be interested in someone like him. 
And yet, here he was with not just any girl, but one he actually harbored feelings for. And not only had she actually agreed to go out with him, rather than laugh in his face when he asked, but she she actually felt the same way about him. It defied everything Izuku had been conditioned to think. But then again, that had happened a lot this year. He glanced at the girl walking next to him. Being near his house, Izuku had recommended a ramen shop that was fairly close to the library, which Mina seemed to be fine with. Once they had decided that, the two had walked in almost complete silence. While she clearly wasn't nearly as wound up as Izuku was, Mina was also quite nervous. She was still reeling somewhat from the normally shy boy's sudden question. She could still hardly believe he had actually been the one to ask her out, instead of the other way around. Plus, on top of that, she had decided to confess her feelings right then and there, something she was still not sure was a good idea. Izuku hadn't really said anything in response to it. Did he not actually feel the same, but then why would he ask her on a date if he didn't, did he just not feel comfortable saying it? The black angeloid girl shook her head. It was very unlike her to be this shaken. She wanted to say something to the boy, but her voice just didn't want to work. The most she could do was steal the occasional glance at him. Unbeknownst to her, he was doing the same thing. By chance, they each tried to sneak a peek at the same time. Upon realizing the other had caught them, they each snapped their heads away from one another. Mina was getting annoyed. What was she doing this whole shy girl routine wasn't her in the slightest. She cleared her throat. So she mustered up some courage, and turned to look at her date again. This seemed to startle Izuku slightly, suggesting he had been deep in thought like usual. How much further is this place? Ah, it's right around this corner, actually, the tense boy stuttered. Mina sighed. They both needed to loosen up a little if this was going to go anywhere. As they rounded the street corner, the sign for the shop Izuku had mentioned could be seen. As the two teens approached the entrance, Izuku suddenly sprang forward. Before Mina could react, he had flung open the door with an excessive amount of enthusiasm, holding it open as he moved to the side. After you he squeaked, gesturing with his free hand for her to enter, practically bowing. This was the sort of thing guys were supposed to do on dates, right? The horned girl stared blankly at him for a few seconds before she realized what he was doing. In an instant, the stuffy, awkward air seemed to dissipate as a result of Izuku's over-the-top chivalry. Oh my, such a gentleman Mina exclaimed in a fancy voice, curtsying with an invisible dress. He was such a sweetie. A darky sweetie, but a sweetie nonetheless. Giggling at the blush that appeared on his face in response to her comment, Mina entered the restaurant with her companion right behind her. They sat themselves down at a booth across from one another. This is nice, Mina commented, looking around. Very romantic she had regained her composure, and was back to her normal teasing self. Izuku made a small, high-pitched sound as she said this, looking down at his menu. He heard another giggle from Mina. Come on, Izuku, we're on a date here. Lighten up a bit. He gulped. She was right, of course, but calming down seemed near impossible for him right now. Sorry he murmured, clearly embarrassed at his own, well, embarrassment. He took a few deep breaths, trying to unwind just a bit. It slowly started working his hands stopped shaking a little, his hair traits slowed, and his stomach muscles loosened. He gathered the resolve to look at Mina. She smiled as he did. That's better. Mina looked at her menu. Now, what to get? The two took some time to decide on what they wanted, Izuka recommending a few things to Mina at a request. A waiter came by to take their orders, and returned shortly after that with drinks. As they waited for food, the pair chatted a bit, now feeling a little more at ease. So do you come here often Mina asked. Well, my mom would take me here a lot when I was younger. Nowadays it's kind of a special occasion thing for us. Mina smirked. Figures your mom's boy. That's Izuku seemed to shrink a little, blushing as he sipped his drink to avoid saying anything else. Mina laughed. Nothing wrong with that. I think it's cute. She paused. Just like you, she added with a wink. Izuku started coughing as he choked a bit on his drink. How could she expect him to lighten up as she kept saying these sorts of things? Of course, deep down he liked hearing her say stuff like that. Knowing someone felt this way about him was uplifting, to say the least. Whoa, don't I am man Mina exclaimed. Izuku pounded his chest a couple times. Sorry, he sputtered as he stopped coughing. They looked at each other for a moment. Izuku realized he hadn't said anything remotely romantic since they left the library. And he had been the one to suggest they go out in the first place, even if he hadn't exactly meant to at the time. Mina had made a few flirty comments here and there, and was clearly trying to make something of this. He swallowed some saliva. He should say something nice at least. Compliment her, you're pretty. Izuku buried his face in his hands as it turned dark red. Apparently his mouth and brain did were not working together today. Mina's cheeks turned magenta at his comment, yet at the same time she burst out laughing. Smooth. How long did it take you to come up with that one? I'm really bad at this. Izuku's voice was muffled by his hands. Why did he even try? Kinda. Izuku felt her hands grab his, increasing his anxiety. She slowly pulled them away so he was looking at her. Look, you don't need to try so hard. 
I mean, I appreciate the compliment, but it almost sounded forced. Izuku averted his eyes. Well, we're in a date, so I figured. That's act natural, dude. She squeezed his hands a bit. Don't do stuff because you think you have to. Izuku was silent, but nodded. Good. Their food arrived shortly a minute later, which they promptly started eating. Amem this is pretty good, Mina commented with a mouthful of noodles. I can see why you like this place so much. Izuku simply nodded back, not wanting to talk with his mouthful. They didn't say much as they ate. One of them would occasionally comment about some aspect of the food, but that was about it. Izuku reflected on what Mina told him. She was right he shouldn't be trying to do or say anything just because it's what he was supposed to do on a date. Not unless he genuinely wanted to, anyway. And was very clear he was not a romantic sort. He looked up from his bowl at the girl across from him. His tactless comment hadn't been a lie, of course Izuku did find Mina quite attractive. Now that he recognized he apparently had feelings for her, and that she had them for him, he felt slightly less creepy acknowledging that fact. Of course, he still felt a bit uncomfortable with her choice of attire, and was fighting even harder not to ogle at something he shouldn't. Knowing she had been planning to ask him out at some point in the future, he was beginning to suspect she had intentionally chosen that outfit to mess with him. She was going to ask him out. Because I like you, silly her words echoed in his head. He had a hard enough time accepting that she was willing to go on a date with him, but to hear that she was already harboring feelings for him was even more unbelievable. He couldn't help but wonder what it was she saw in him. In his mind, he was nothing special. That quiet weird nerdy kid that didn't stand out. Hey, Mina he wasn't sure if this was a good idea, but it had been gnawing at him this whole time. Mina currently had her bowl in front of her face as she slurped the remaining broth down. It seemed she was a very fast eater. And she lowered the bowl, wiping her mouth. Can, I, um can I ask you something the girl tilted her head a bit as she looked at him. You just did, she joked, cracking a smile. Izuku felt the corner of his mouth twitch a bit. A dumb joke, but amusing nonetheless. But seriously, of course. Shoot. Um well the nervous boy twiddled his thumbs. I've been wanting to ask what he looked away slightly, his cheeks warming up. What is it you like about me Mina was silent for a few seconds. Well for starters, that adorable face of yours, Izuku's whole face began to glow. She giggled. Seriously, you're just so cute when you get all worked up like that. She found him cute. Izuku already knew this by now, but it wasn't helping his blush. But aside that it's your unbreakable spirit. You're, like, seriously the most determined passionate dude I've ever met. You're always ready to face every challenge, no matter what life throws at you. I really admire that about you. She paused. I I want to be more like that. Hardworking, driven. Mina. But also, it's your genuineness is that a word you're just so honest and open about yourself and your feelings when you want to be. You're not afraid to be emotional I think it's really sweet. It could take a little effort to make him open up, sure, but she never got the impression he was trying to hide anything. Boo. Was all Izuku responded with, rubbing the back of his head. His stomach was full of butterflies. I I ah, uh, feel kind of similar about the eye, actually he said quietly. Mina felt her chest muscles tighten just a bit. The eye are so comfortable with yourself. The eye were always so confident and positive about everything, he stammered. I it's a lot like All Might. I want to I want to be more like both him and the eye. He gulped. I, I really like that about you, Mina. He blushed once again. And you think I'm really pretty, right the noblishing girl joked. Irma Izuku fumbled with words, and sighed. The eyes. There was a brief silence between the two of them before they both started laughing. Neither was sure why they laughed it may have simply been the good mood they were both in. Despite his constant stuttering and overall nervousness, Izuku was having a great time. Spending a meal with someone he cared deeply about made him glow with happiness. Mina was, of course, experiencing a similar feeling. They stopped laughing and simply looked into each other's eyes, each smiling warmly at the other. It seemed they had been so drawn to each other because they each admired something about the other, both aspired to be more like one another. Finding each other physically appealing certainly didn't hurt, either. They continued to gaze at one another. For a second, the rest of the world seemed to stop existing. Mina. Izuku. The sudden appearance of their server shattered the moment as he placed a check on the table. Naturally, the two students were a bit upset about this interruption. Izuku scrambled for the check. Oh um, let me get that for. Izuku, no. Mina grabbed his arm as he reached for the paper. But I asked you out, I should. What did I say earlier she pushed his hand away. I appreciate the gesture, but we can split it. I don't mind. Ooh, alright they each pulled out their wallets. You sure you? Yes Izuku. The Hiroshin training exited the restaurant, stopping just outside. They turned to each other. So Mina started. Now what was only 645 they had been out for about an hour. Um should we call it a night Izuku didn't really want to part ways just yet, but he also didn't want to impose. PFF, you kidding it's way too early dude. Besides she took a step closer to him. I still want to spend some time with you. Oh, um, okay Izuku was feeling a bit uncomfortable with how close she was getting. 
What did you want to do then Mina looked across the street, a theater catching her eye. How about a movie she suggested. Dinner and a show, pretty standard dating stuff. Plus, the perfect place for them to get a little intimate. Oh uh, yeah, that sounds nice. The green haired boy agreed. Great. Shall we they began making their way across the road. These look good, Mina said, pointing at a couple seats near the back of the theater. She and Izuku made their way over, sitting down. Unsurprisingly, the two of them had settled on seeing a film about heroes. However, this one was a particularly old film, one that was actually made before Quirks first appeared. Several comics and movies had been made about fictional heroes and villains, long before Quirks existed, and you could still find plenty of merchandise for them, if you knew where to look. This theater was apparently showing it as a special occasion. Apparently, the titular hero was known to be one of the most popular heroes of his time. You ever seen this Vina asked her date. To her surprise, he shook his head. No? I've heard of the character though. He used to be a huge thing back when these kinds of characters were popular. Well he doesn't sound that cool. I mean, Spider-Man really couldn't have picked a slightly more creative name Mina shook her head. Um didn't you pick Pinky for your hero name Mina's face turned a bit magenta. That was because that stupid midnight wouldn't let me take my first choice she argued, puffing her cheeks a bit. Besides, it's it's a work in progress Izuku unsuccessfully tried to hide his laughter, it was rare for Mina to get caught off guard like that. It was really cute. Right, Izuku decided not to press anymore. By the way where did the name Alien Queen come from, anyways? Mina turned to look him in the eye. You don't know Izuku shook his head. For a moment, he saw a sinister look flash across her face. It seemed she had gotten an idea. He didn't like that. I'll explain some other time. It'll be more fun to show you, was all she said. Izuku really didn't like that. However, before he could ask any more questions, the lights dimmed as the logo for the movie's studio came up. Oh, it's starting Mina excitedly proclaimed. Izuku forgot about the conversation they were just having, his attention immediately turning to the screen. The two were silent as the movie began to play. They'd occasionally whisper about something happening in the plot, or pointing out a bad special effect the movie was old, after all, or an actor's performance. 20 minutes into the film, Izuku felt something on his hand. He blushed as he realized it was Mina's hand once again grabbing his. Instinct told him to pull away, but something else told him to leave it there. He decided to listen to that feeling as he adjusted his hand, so it was also holding hers. Just like at the hospital. He felt Mina shift. He turned to see her looking at him, smiling gently. He did the same, though his probably looked a bit more sheepish. 40 minutes in, Mina decided to take it a step further. She had eased Izuku into things at this point, and felt comfortable escalating a bit. Inching closer to him, she leaned in and rested her head on his shoulder. She felt all the muscles immediately tense up. Mina Izuku loudly whispered. She couldn't quite see his face, but he was obviously way more anxious than normal. What are you doing? SSHH she shushed, nuzzling him a bit. Just let me stay here, alright she rubbed the hand that was gripping hers with her thumb a bit. She felt him shudder. Izuku was panicking. Was this really okay, he had never been anywhere near this close to a girl before. It felt so so. Nice. And warm. Izuku swallowed. He still wasn't sure if this was okay, but he decided he was fine with it. For now, at least. Okay, he said softly. He felt a soft squeeze on his hand in response. Slowly, almost unconsciously, Izuka lowered his head so it was resting atop Mina's. More warmth. More niceness. He picked up a faint, sweet smell, coming from her hair. Her shampoo, perhaps. Despite his bright red face, Izuku smiled. Why? He, again mostly subconsciously, nuzzled Mina just like she did to him. A soft pleasant sound escaped Mina's lips in response. This only made his face redder and his smile whiter. They remained like this for most of the rest of the movie. Occasionally, they separate when a dramatic moment happened so they could properly react, but they would quickly return to their positions right after. Each time, Izuku's hesitation faded more and more. Neither of them had felt this much joy in a long, long time. The pair left the movie theater, fervently discussing the film they just saw. That was amazing, I can't believe the bad guy stabbed himself with his own jet thing like that talk about karma Mina exclaimed, flailing her arms. The Izuku had visibly winced at that scene. It was good the villain was stopped, but death was not something he liked seeing. Still, it wasn't like the hero killed him. But man, what a weird concept getting a quirk because a weird spider bit you. Well it technically wasn't a quirk. Those didn't exist back then, after all. Yeah yeah, semantics, Mina said, waving a hand up and down. Izuku had to admit he felt a real connection with the protagonist. A nerdy high school kid who was constantly picked on suddenly getting superpowers and getting the chance to be a hero, it hit a little too close to home. Still, I mean can you seriously imagine if you could just be given a quirk like that talk about crazy ideas. Izuku stopped walking at these words. You're just so open and honest about yourself he recalled what Mina had said just a little while ago. It was one of the things she said she liked most about him. Why she had agreed to go on this date. And yet, she had no idea. 
Actually, about that he found himself saying. Nina looked back. And what about what? The idea that you could be given a cork is it's not so crazy. Nina had now turned completely around, a confused look on her face. What makes you say that she asked, cocking her head as she raised an eyebrow. Because, well, I he stopped himself. What the heck was he doing he couldn't tell her that. I, I just think, there are so many different quirks out there, who knows if there's one that lets you transfer give people quirks he quickly fabricated a sentence. I mean, I guess but it still sounds ridiculous to me. She turned around and kept walking, not seeming to suspect anything. Izuku wiped a hand across his forehead. No matter how he felt about her, there was no way he could tell her about one for all. He hadn't told anyone, not even his mom. Still, the fact that it meant he was sort of lying about his powers to her, didn't make him feel too good. But he had technically told her the truth, so he managed to shake off the guilty feeling after a minute or two. The two decided it was now late enough to end the date. Izuku agreed to walk with Mina to the train station and see her off. Despite their actions in the theater, they decided not to display any affection as they walked. Mina wanted to, of course, but she knew doing anything in public would make Izuku far too uncomfortable at this time. They arrived at the station after a short walk, finding the platform Mina would board a train. The pink girl led him to an area where there were no people standing around, and turned to face him. While this was fun, she stated, her arms behind her back. Yeah, it was. The two of them didn't say anything else for a moment, both of them shuffling awkwardly. Would you um like to do this again Mina asked, moving just a bit closer towards the boy. I, I would, yeah. Izuku tugged at his collar. Um would you? Definitely. Another awkward silence. Both students had blushes on their faces. And, um Mina took another step, closing the gap between them further. Thanks again for all your help today. I wouldn't mind studying together some more. Izuku gulped as he realized they were only about six inches apart. Boom yeah, that'd be fine. A third, longer silence. They stared at each other, hearts pounding. Mina inched closer once more. She began to lean forward, eyes slowly shutting as she puckered her lips. Only to be stopped by a forehead bumping against hers. She opened her eyes to see that Izuku had lowered his head, stopping her from reaching his lips. Sorry, he quietly apologized. But um too don't don't think I'm ready for for that. The cuddling in the theater was one thing. The kiss was on a whole other level, and something he did not feel comfortable doing at this time. Oh? Right. Mina quickly backed up, looking both disappointed and a bit ashamed. I sorry. Once again, she took things a bit too far. Izuku frowned. He didn't want their date to end like this. Without a word, and mostly without thinking, he suddenly moved forward and wrapped his arms around Mina, pulling her in for a hug. It was still incredibly nerve-wracking for him, but significantly less so than a kiss. Mina was stunned for a few seconds, and then returned the embrace. She rested her head on Izuku's shoulder once again, taking care not to poke him with her horns. The warm, soft feeling Izuku felt at the theater was now completely covering his body. He had never felt such a comfortable sensation before, and he didn't want it to end. Mina felt the same way. They were forced to separate when they heard Mina's train start to pull into the station about a minute later, though they kept their hands on each other's shoulders. Well, I'm um, talk to you later, Mina said after a few seconds. Reluctantly, she completely separated from Izuku, and made her way onto the train. They waved to each other as the doors shut and the train pulled out of the station. Izuku sighed heavily, leaning his back against the wall. He still couldn't believe he had actually hugged a girl like that. He couldn't believe most of the things that occurred today, really. And yet, it had happened. All of it. And he couldn't be happier because of it. He has successfully gone on a date with Mino Shido. And from the sounds of it, he may have another one to look forward to. And perhaps another after that. And one after that and and. It slowly dawned on him. Did he have a girlfriend now? Izuku clutched his head with one hand. Despite everything that had happened today, that was a concept his brain refused to accept. He actually felt faint just thinking about it. He started heading home, trying not to think too much more about the idea. At least, not yet. Mina fling open her bedroom door, tossing her backpack on the hour dimacy floor as she entered. She had a spring in her step as she hummed a tune to herself, a huge closet lip smile on her face. She flopped onto her bed, letting out a loud, joyful sigh. She laid there for a moment, looked up at her ceiling before grabbing the plushie on her bed, a cute version of the monster from Alien, and squeezing it against her chest, rolling back and forth as she giggled. She hadn't felt this good since the day she found out she was going to Yue. She could still feel Siizuku's smiling, blushing face. Hear his adorable stammering. Feel the warmth of his arms wrapped around her. She recalled his heartfelt words at the Raymond shop about what he saw in her. All the details of that evening were still fresh in her mind, and her heart fluttered just thinking about it all. Any reluctance and uncertainties she had had about wanting to date Izuku had been shattered. Their date, awkward though it was, had been a success. And it sounded like they were going to go on another. Her breath caught in her throat. Did that mean they were together now? The enamored girl felt her chest start to pound. She took a few deep breaths, trying to calm down. 
Easy, Nina easy she sat up, putting her stuffed Xanomurf down. One step at a time, girl. She was getting a bit ahead of herself it had just been one date, after all. She began getting ready for bed, contemplating the future. She honestly hadn't given much thought to the idea of pursuing a serious relationship with Izuku. Now that the two had gone on an actual date, however, it was something she had to consider. Her immediate thought was yes, she did want one. But she knew there was a few things to consider. For one, the fact was that they still hadn't known each other that well for very long. Everything between them happened so fast, and Mina was worried that rushing into a relationship might be a bad idea. At the same time, though, she felt her and Izuku had established a genuine connection. She sensed it a few times these past few days those moments where they wouldn't say anything and just look at each other. Like they didn't need words to tell each other what they were thinking. In those moments, Mina could feel something beyond a simple teenage crush. It was ridiculous to call it love, of course, but Mina truly cared about Izuku. And she got the feeling he cared just as much about her. So maybe, just maybe, a relationship wasn't such a far-fetched idea. Mina finished getting ready and returned to her bed. Her mind continued to run as she tried to get to sleep. Of course, there was no way to truly know how Izuku felt. For all she knew, he had found the day too awkward and stressful. There was also the fact that he was a very dedicated student. Would you want a relationship right now his life was crazy enough as is. The tired girl groaned. Sitting up, she grabbed the phone on her nightstand. She knew this probably wasn't a good idea, but she needed to try to clear her head. Her finger hovered over the call button as she hesitated. Was asking something like this over the phone really the best idea? Hey Izuku, what's up just wanted to know if you're my boyfriend now, Mina said in a half-serious voice. Yeah, that's totally the best way to approach this. Still, she could tell this was going to be picking her brain all night. What to do? Her phone lighting up and buzzing answered her question. Her eyes widened a bit as she saw who it was. Izuku she immediately answered, talking a little louder than she intended. Ah uh, hey, Mina. Just hearing his voice was making her feel all tingly. There was a brief silence. Um I know we can just say it already, but tonight was really fun. Yeah, it really was, Mina agreed. She was a bit confused was this all he was calling about. So um to know we mentioned another date, but there was a pause. Mina's smile dropped. She felt her heart sink. So he really didn't want to. We didn't really talk about when. And in an instant, those feelings were replaced with an urge to strangle Izuku. Affectionately, of course. Oh? Um. Yeah, I guess we didn't, did we? She resisted the urge to yell at him for accidentally playing with her emotions. If you still wanted to, I mean but if you don't, I I aren't. Izuku, stop, Mina interrupted. Of course I want to. She thought for a moment. Um were you busy tomorrow? Tomorrow Izuku squealed. So so soon Mina rocked back and forth on her bed. I know it's kinda sudden, but I just I really wanna see you again. She started twirling some of her hair around her finger. But if that wouldn't work, I... I'd love to Mina wince, pulling the phone a few inches away from her ear, as Izuku practically screamed. Ah oh, three mini I, tomorrow tomorrow would be nice. Mina could imagine how ready must be after that emotional outburst she swore she could feel the heat radiating through the phone. She let out a laugh. You're just too damn cute. She heard an incomprehensible noise on Izuku's end. Suo, did you have anything in mind Izuku took a moment to form actual words. Oh, well, um I figured we could do some more studying Tajida. Mina rolled her eyes. Of course his idea of a date would involve school word. Still, there was a lot more material she wanted to catch up on, so a couple hours of study wouldn't hurt. Not exactly the most romantic idea I've ever heard, but sure, she replied. But I'd rather not spend all day in the library again. Kinda stuffy in there. But well, um, the weather's supposed to be nice tomorrow. Maybe we could go to a park or something Mina smiled she liked the sound of that. Sounds like a great idea. There's a pretty big one near my place, actually. We could study for a bit, then go walking on some of the trails though. We could totally have a little picnic, or maybe she got more and more excited, as she started rattling off all the activities they could potentially do together. Um yes, that sounds Mina, wait, slow down Mina Izuku could barely get a word in. And we could oh, sorry. Got a bit carried away there. She laughed nervously, blushing to herself. So, um park sounds good, yeah. Yeah. I'll, um, follow up on a time tomorrow. Sounds good. See you then Mina hung up the phone, setting it back down. She let out another loud sigh, lying back in bed. She could have asked about what their relationship was at this point, but she decided against it. She'd let tomorrow play out she had a feeling both she and Izuku would have a better idea afterwards. Izuku could still feel himself blushing as he hung up the phone. He didn't know what prompted him to call Mina and ask about that. They could have waited until tomorrow, right did asking about a second date barely an hour after the first seemed too clingy too desperate. He had considered all those things, yet he couldn't get himself to stop thinking about it. By the time he had gotten home from the station, he already missed being around Mina. He had gone straight to his room after getting home and just sat in bed for a while, thinking about everything that had happened that day. It all still felt like a dream to him. 
He had tried to get to sleep, but his brain was in overdrive thinking about Mina. Her perfect smile that lit up the room, that bubbly laugh that could cheer anyone up, those gorgeous eyes that he found himself getting lost in so many times, her soft fluffy hair rubbing against his cheek. Izuku felt a bit ashamed of himself thinking like that. Being that close to Mina had been terrifying at the time, but now that he was back home, he found himself longing for her touch again. He just wanted to be with her more. He was head over heels for the girl, even if she did turn him into a babbling mess at the slightest hint of affection. He had called her hoping that it would help get her out of his head a bit. Unfortunately, it was having the opposite effect he hadn't expected Mina to want to meet tomorrow. He wasn't even sure she'd want to meet at all. But he was more than happy to spend time with her tomorrow, as evidenced by his overly enthusiastic agreement. That said, the fact remained that this would be a second date. What did it mean if they wanted another he had tried not to think about since the station, but was this potentially becoming a serious relationship? Izuku shuddered. He had never once in his life entertained the idea of having a girlfriend. The fact that there was a possibility of it happening now scared him. But at the same time, just thinking about it being a reality put a big, stupid smile on his face. He yawned. His mind finally seemed to be tiring itself out. Rolling over, he shut his eyes and eventually drifted off to sleep. Okay school books, lunch, anything else? Izuka rummaged through his bag, triple checking to make sure he had everything. It was about 12pm, and he needed to meet Mina in about an hour. After waking up, he had texted Mina asking about a time to meet. They both had morning chores to do, as well as their own workout routines, so they decided on an afternoon meetup. He was nervous, of course. He had no clue what to expect for a second date. Yesterday had happened on a whim, but this was planned. He dreaded what Mina had in store for him. Mom, I'm heading out Izuku called as he approached the door. Have fun with your friend and make sure you don't stay out too late, okay his mother's voice called out from the other room. Izuku hadn't told her exactly what he was actually doing, of course. He didn't like keeping things from his mom, but he also didn't want to drop the fact that he was going on a date on her. He didn't want her knowing until he had determined what exactly he and Mina were to each other. As he stepped out the door, he felt his phone vibrate. He pulled it out, expecting something from Mina she had been texting him all morning, usually about random stuff. Not that he minded. He stopped walking when he realized who it was from. Hey Deku, some of us are going to the beach in around 3, did you want to join? Achako Yuraka. Izuku panicked. He had been so caught up in spending time with Mina he had forgotten about his other friends. They'd obviously want to do stuff with him over the break. He sighed. It sounded like fun, but he wanted to be with Mina today. And there was no way he was going try and bring her to this. He had no intention of telling his friends about what was going on, not when he himself didn't fully know what was going on. Of course, he didn't want to lie either. So, he'd have to compromise and tell a half-truth. I'm so sorry, but I can't today. I have other plans. Technically true. Oh well, maybe some other time this week then Yuraka responded. He was beyond grateful she didn't press for details. Yeah, definitely he still wasn't opposed to the idea, of course. Just not today. He continued on his way to the train station. Mina checked her phone for the fourth time in the past two minutes. 102. She fidgeted impatiently as she sat on a bench at the train stop, watching vigilantly for the next arrival. She had expected Izuku on the last couple stops, but there had been so sign of him. Come on, hurry up already, she mumbled to herself. The morning had crawled by, and she was beyond sick of waiting. Her mom was a bit concerned with her going out for the day again, but she was much more accepting when Mina explained she was going to study with a friend. Mina had never been one to lie to her parents, so her mom trusted that she was actually going to study and not, say, hang out at an arcade all day. And technically, she was going to study with a friend. That just wasn't the whole truth. She had every intention of telling her parents about Izuku, but first she needed to see where her relationship with him was actually going. Plus, she didn't want her brother overhearing that she had a date she wouldn't hear the end of it from him. She had also received a text from Yuraka inviting her to an outing at the beach. It sounded like a blast, but Mina declined, saying she had other stuff going on. She just wanted to be with Izuku today there was a lot she needed to figure out, after all. As she eyed the train tracks like a hawk, she didn't notice the figure walking up to her. You know you missed a couple trains already right, Mina snapped her head in the direction of the voice to see a familiar head of spiky red hair. Her eyes widened slightly. Hiroshima what are you have you been spying on me she glared. Her classmate held his hands up in a defensive manner. Hey, it ain't like that I just got off a couple trains back and happened to catch you sitting here. I thought it was a bit weird. He looked at the tracks. You, uh, waiting for someone or something. Of course I am, dummy, she snapped, looking back at the tracks. She saw Kurashima grin in her peripheral as he leaned in. Dude, I swear. It's Midoriya, isn't it Mina gave him an elbow in the ribs as a response. He seemed to anticipate this and activated his cork just enough to absorb the blow. Aha I knew it. Mina couldn't hide her blush for long. She shouldn't be so concerned. 
After all, he already knew she was planning to ask Kazuko out. Alright, yes, she admitted. We're going to study at the park. Uo, the park. I see my little plan is paying off. There was clear pride in his voice. Better than you think, actually Mina felt like he deserved to know, seeing as he helped her out. He, um actually asked me out yesterday. Hiroshima's jaw dropped. No way. No freaking seriously him just like that Mina shrugged. I, I couldn't believe it either. We ended up getting dinner and seeing a movie. It was really nice. She smiled as she remembered last night once again. Like, really nice. I'm, I'm actually meeting him for a second one. Her middle school friend beamed. Dude, that's great so you two are a thing now Mina tensed up a bit at the mention of this. Well not exactly. I mean, maybe I don't really know yet Kirishima gave her a puzzled look. What do you mean maybe you guys went on a date, now you're going on another. Sounds like you're a couple to me. He shrugged. I, it's not that simple there's, well the thing is she huffed, trying to think of a way to explain to the Radid. It's just a lot more nuanced than that. I mean no, it really isn't. Not to me anyway. Mina rolled her eyes. That's because you're as dense as they come. Before he could respond, they both heard the loudspeaker announce that the next train was arriving. Oh crap, that might be him she stood up, practically pushing Kirishima away. You need to leave, now. Jeez, calm down Mina, just. Now a few people looked over at them. Alright, I get it, sheesh, Kirishima relented. I'll leave you two lovebirds alone then. He turned to head back up the stairs leading to the station exit. Wait, one more thing, he stopped, turning to her. If you tell anyone about any of this she held out a hand, a bit of acid forming in it. She had a dead serious look on her face. They won't find your body. Got it. Kirishima simply grinned. It was a scary look, but he had known her long enough to recognize it was just a front. Still, he didn't feel like upsetting her, so he'd keep his mouth shut. Loud and clear, ma'am, was all he said before leaving. Mina let out a half sigh of grin as she ran a hand down her face. She did not need that right now. Though she supposed she should be grateful it had been Kirishima she couldn't imagine trying to explain what was going on to someone who didn't know, especially if she couldn't get rid of them before Izuku arrived. Plus, she knew Kirishima wouldn't tell anyone. At least, if he knew what was good for him. She returned her attention to the train that was pulling in. Her eyes darted from door to door as people started pouring out until she spotted a head of green, curly hair in the crowd. She sprang to her feet, practically leaping up and down as she frantically waved to Izuku. He quickly noticed her shoe wasn't hard to spot, after all, and gave a wave and a smile, before maneuvering his way through the swarm of people over to her. Hey, sorry I'm a little late, Ayazuku started apologizing for his tardiness before Mina suddenly pulled him into a tight hug. Alarms started going off in his head as his whole body went rigid. Girl. Hugging him. Public. But she was so warm. Mina quickly realized his discomfort and pulled away, an apologetic smile on her face. Ha, hey, sorry. Got a bit too excited. Izuku's face slowly turned back to a normal color as his body relaxed. I missed you. She knew it sounded ridiculous, since it hadn't even been a day since she last saw him, but it was the truth. Izuku looked away slightly, rubbing his arm. The yeah, I me too, he admitted, his cheeks turning rosy. Ah uh, should we get going? Mina led the way as they made their way out of the station to the park. They managed to have a small conversation along the way, asking how each other's mornings had gone. I'm seriously going to kill him one of these days. Mina had just finished ranting about her brother. He, he certainly sounds like a handful, Izuku commented. They walked a few more steps. You, um you look nice, by the way, he said quietly, a blush creeping onto his face. Mina's face also changed color slightly, not expecting the compliment. Much to Izuku's gratitude, Mina had picked a slightly more modest outfit for this outing. She wore a slightly loose black top with acid written in bright pink letters across it, along with olive green shorts that went to about her knees. She had intentionally picked something a little less snug for the boy's sake, deciding to give him a breather after seeing his reaction yesterday. Izuku had, as usual, gone with a pretty plain outfit, wearing a great shirt and cargo shorts. Thanks. So do you. Mina smiled as she returned the compliment. They arrived at the park around 130. It was a warm summer afternoon, but not overly humid, making it an ideal day to spend outside. They set out finding a spot to set up their things that was away from other park goers, both to help focus on studying, and to give them some privacy. The park was pretty busy, as was expected, but the two teens eventually found a tree to sit under with nobody in the immediate area. Oh, this is perfect, Mina commented as Scott settled in, leaning against the trunk. Nice and quiet. Yeah. Izuku took in their surroundings. The park was fairly expansive, with rolling hills of green with specks of color from flowers and animals. The air was filled with the sound of birds singing and insects buzzing. The trees swayed ever so slightly as a gentle breeze blew. Now I don't know about you, but I'm feeling pretty hungry. Gonna eat before we start any work, Mina said, pulling out her lunch. Izuku felt the same. They ate in relative silence, drinking in the calm beauty around them. Every so often one would ask the other about their food, or point out something that caught their eye. 
Once they finished, they decided to begin studying. Naturally, it started off much smoother than yesterday, though Mina didn't get quite as into it this time. That said, they were still able to move at a good pace. About 45 minutes passed before they decided to take a short break. Man, this Matrix stuff is confusing Mina muttered, rubbing her forehead. You're getting the hang of it though, Izuku pointed out. We just need to keep practicing. Yeah, I know, brain workouts and all that. Doesn't mean it's not tough. Mina sat so her chin was resting on her knees, her arms wrapped around her legs. Thanks, by the way. The green-haired boy looked at her, slightly confused. For what? For sticking with me through this. I mean, yesterday didn't exactly get off to a good start, and I feel a lot of other people would have just gotten too frustrated with me to continue. She knocked a fist against her head a few times. I'm not exactly the brightest tool in the shed, so it's not easy for me to grasp all this stuff. But you're just so patient. You don't mind explaining something, like, five times in a row for me if you need to. It can be easy, and I, I really appreciate it. She gave him a small smile, though there was a hint of sadness in it, as if to say I don't deserve it. It's nothing, really he assured her. I mean, what kind of person would I be if I just gave up on someone in need? He did his best all might small, complete with a thumbs up as he said this. Besides, I don't think I don't think you give yourself enough credit, Mina. This stuff wasn't easy for me to grasp either. You, you're a lot smarter than you think. Mina's smile brightened. Why do you always know just what to say she asked, scooching closer to him. Izuku tugged at his collar. A weller he shuddered a bit as he felt a familiar feeling on his hand. Looking down he saw, sure enough, Mina had grabbed it. He gulped, looking back up at her. Like so many times before, the two of them stared at each other, neither one saying a word. Once again, the rest of the world seemed. Mina could feel it. This was the time to ask. Hey, Izuku um, are we? Midori Oshido is it you? The sound of a distant, familiar voice calling out immediately drew Mina and Izuku out of their trance. Turning towards the source of the sound, their eyes simultaneously widened. Tenya Ida was currently jogging towards them, waving enthusiastically. Izuku felt all the color drain from his face. He practically screamed as he quickly pulled away from Mina, wanting to create some distance. Mina apparently had the same idea. Fortunately, Ida seemed to be too far away to have noticed how close they had been. Ah, it is you enjoying the nice weather, I see the class 1A representative greeted as he got close enough to speak at a normal volume. Well, normal for Ida anyway. Boom hey, Ida. What brings you here Izuku was practically shaking he was so frightened. I was just out for a run before meeting up with some of our classmates later. He paused. Ah, Yuraka did mention you wouldn't be making it because of other plans. I take it this is what she meant. Er well, you see Izuku was scrambling for a way out of this. Mina simply watched and stayed silent. The bespectacled boy looked at her, then back at Izuku, then back to her. Um, forgive me for prying, but I can't help but find it strange to find you two here alone. Why not join us at the beach I'm certain you were both invited. Izuku internally screamed. Ida had somehow failed to immediately guess why they were here, but he was going to quickly figure it out. Should he just tell the truth he didn't want to lie to his friend, of course, but he didn't feel ready to disclose something like this. Um well, I'll see, Mina and I were. He's helping me with studying Mina chimed in suddenly, leaning in to get Ida's attention. Yeah. I, uh, I talked about it with him the day we went to Kiyashi Ward. Well that wasn't actually true, everyone knew the two of them had spent time together that day. We just didn't want to get too distracted is all, so we decided to come here on our own. Mina didn't really talk to Ida, but she and everyone else in the class knew he had a fervent respect for academics. Hopefully bringing that up would distract him. Ida stared intensely, light reflecting off his glasses, so they masked his eyes. Is that so he turned away, stroking his chin. To think you would use your time off to help a fellow student he spun back around, a look of admiration on his face. Truly, you embody what it means to be a UA student, Midoriya you are a shining example to us all he glanced at Izuku's companion. And you, Ashida using the vacation to study it is good to see you taking your education seriously. I see the results of your final haven't hurt your conviction in the slightest. Mina gave a blank stare, opening her mouth and then closing it. Was that supposed to be a compliment? I am so honored that I was chosen to represent a class of such students. Ida looked like he was on the verge of tears as he clenched a fist in front of his face. Mina couldn't help but muse that Izuku had technically been chosen first. Well then, I shall let you two return to your work. I apologize for interrupting. The Injinlik boy bowed to his classmates before running back to the path to continue his jog. Mina and Izuku sat completely still for several seconds after he was out of sight. They then simultaneously let out a massive sigh of relief. Izuku covered his face with his hands while Mina just shook her head, a bewildered look on her face. Thanks, Izuku's muffled voice said. I, I didn't know what to do. Don't mention it got Mina leaned against a tree. What, what is he her date uncovered his face. He's he's really intense, but he's a good friend, trust me, he stammered, trying to defend Ido a little. 
I couldn't tell if he was complimenting me or insulting me, Nina remarked, letting out a small laugh. Like holy crap. What a character. She turned her head to look at Izuku, who looked just as lost as she did. Ida's intrusion had totally spoiled the mood, and she had lost any drive to bring up their relationship anymore. So back to work Izuku looked at her, a hand over his chest as he breathed a bit heavily. Um, sure, just just give me a minute. The afternoon seemed to fly by for Izuku and Mina. They spent about another hour studying before deciding they'd had enough, and decided to enjoy the outdoors. They walked around the park, spent some time on a playground or two, and just sat and took in the scenery together. Mina would periodically find some way to flirt with her date, knowing just the right thing to say or do to get him flustered. As the day went on, they went to a nearby American chain and grabbed a quick bite to eat, before Mina insisted they return to the park for one last thing. The two U.S. students were walking through a wooded trail in the park that slowly seemed to be leading uphill. Mina claimed she had something amazing to show Izuku at the top. Naturally, he was slightly worried given her mischievous nature, but he went with it. Come on, it's not much further Mina excitedly exclaimed, literally jumping as she spoke. He said that 20 minutes ago Izuku reminded her, looking at the sky. The sun was starting to set, and he was worried they'd run out of daylight before getting back. Well, I mean it this time. In fact as they rounded a bend, Mina stopped and gestured outward with her hands. Behold Izuku's jaw dropped as he took in the sight before him. They had reached an overlook that gave an impressive view of most of the park, as well as the surrounding city. The sun glowed over the horizon as it began its descent. Wow. Pretty sweet right, but that's not the best part. Mina grinned as she led the awestruck boy over to a huge tree that was growing nearby. Here we are. Izuka gave the pink girl a look of confusion. I'm not sure I'm following. Meet you at the top was all Mina said before she tossed her backpack to the ground, leapt up to catch a large low tree branch, and hoisted herself up. She stood on it, turning around to face Izuku. Well, you coming? Wet Izuku cried, taking a step back. Yeah you want me to climb that to the top the tree was at least 60 feet tall. Yeah. Just follow my lead, I know a good way up it. She pulled herself up another branch as if she was some sort of monkey. Mina knew it was going to take some coaxing to get him to climb, but she had no intention of letting him back out of this. But isn't that dangerous Izuku looked up and down the tree, unsure if it would be able to support him at certain points. Dude, I've been climbing this bad boy for years. Trust me, it's safe. She neglected to tell her date about the couple times she fell out of this particular tree, she had learned a safe way up through trial and error, to say the least. She lifted herself onto a third branch, looking back at the ground. Mina, please you're getting too high up Izuku was starting to panic. What if she fell from there? Well, come get me down then, she teased, sticking her tongue out as she continued her ascent. Izuku ran in place a bit, nervously trying to decide what the best course of action was. Did he use full call to jump up and get her? No, that was too dangerous, he would need to hop between a few branches to get to Mina, and that much force hitting the tree, might cause her to fall before he got to her. And trying to talk her down was clearly not working. Fully aware of bad how of an idea it was, Izuku stood back, got a running start, and leapt for the low tree branch Mina had grabbed. He managed to get a hold of it before slowly getting himself on top. Woohoo there you go he heard Mina call down. She seemed to be waiting for him. Now, go exactly where I did and you'll be fine. This is way too HNNG dangerous he called up to her as he pulled himself up the second branch, grateful for his upper body strength. Mina couldn't help but stare as he pulled himself up. He was a lot stronger than he looked. She couldn't help but wonder just what was under that shirt of his. As he got on top of the third branch, Izuku found himself a set of face with an upside down Mina. She was hanging from the branch above by her legs. Oh Mina, that's really risky please, let's go back down the scared boy pleaded once again. Mina put her hands behind her head, giving one of her trademark grins. Sheesh, Izuku, I thought you were all about aiming for the top she said with a wink. With this, she leaned back a little bit before swinging her whole upper body forward, towards Izuku. She managed to bend her body enough to grab the branch, and pulling up, so that she was suddenly sitting on it. Izuku simply watched the display, mouth the gate. He continued to follow her, doing everything in his power not to look down. He had to admit, there was something exciting about climbing such a large tree to him. He hadn't done anything like this during his childhood, and it was rather exhilarating. Of course, it was still terrifying. Eventually, he caught up with Mina, who stopped on what appeared to be the end. Well it wasn't quite at the top of the tree, it was pretty close. And though his face was pale from the fear he was experiencing, Izuku could see why she wanted to come up here. A cluster of large branches had formed a sort of platform near the top of this tree, one that looked fairly sturdy. There was enough room for the two of them to sit comfortably with their legs outstretched, Mina had already done so, and was gesturing for Izuku to sit next to her. Still a bit shaky from being up so high, he managed to make his way to his spot. The view at the base of the tree was nice, but up here it was simply breathtaking. This is Izuku was at a loss for words. He literally felt on top of the world. See worth it, right and you were worried, she teased. 
I'd sell dangerous Suzuku insisted, his face heating up. Mina giggled, snuggling up against him. Well, what's life without a little danger? And she grabbed hold on his hand, resting her head on his shoulders like she did at the theater last night. Izuku once again tensed up, but relaxed surprisingly quickly. He quietly rested his head on hers, again just like the night before. They sat for a moment, admiring the skyline as the sun continued to set. Some clouds had blown in during the day, leaving a streak of pinks, oranges, and reds across the sky. The rustling of leaves in the wind and the drone of the evening cicadas were the only sounds aside from their breathing. Slowly, Izuku forgot about how high up they were, and instead focused on the feeling of Mina up against him. He was experienced all the same emotions he had in the theater last night, but even stronger. Her hair tickled his cheek as she rubbed her head back and forth, a gesture he returned in kind. They both could sense it. This was the moment they had both been waiting for. Izuku. Hey Mina. They spoke almost simultaneously. They each felt a knot in their stomach when they realized the other had said something, and pulled their heads away so they could look at each other. The eye first, Izuku insisted. Color was rushing to each of their faces. Um well Mina looked down a bit. I wanted to bring this up earlier, before Ida happened. MHM Izuku felt his hair trait begin to increase. Well, it's about she took a breath. Well, us. She turned her gaze back to his face. We clearly feel something for each other. And we've gone on two dates now. Boom, actually two was just about to bring this up too. She could see Izuku shaking slightly. Because, um I kind of I kind of want to keep doing this. He mustered up the courage to look her straight in the eye. I really want to keep seeing you, Mina. Mina felt like her heart was going to leap out of her chest. A huge smile crept onto her lips. Haha <laughs> funny, I was going to say the same her voice was about as shaky as Izuku was as she grabbed his other hand, pulling it in, so they their hands were side by side. So um, Izuku do you want to be my my? Boyfriend Izuku squeaked in a high-pitched voice. The eye. Her face was on fire. Izuku stared witty, as if he didn't believe what he was hearing, before nodding enthusiastically. Those that mean you want to want to be my my. Girlfriend and, yes yes, I do she squealed in delight, pulling the red-faced boy into a loving embrace. She felt as if an enormous weight had been lifted off her chest. Izuku was caught off guard for a second before hugging her with equal gusto. They held each other for a minute or so before separating, each smiling at each other with as much radiance as the sun setting before them. Know what Izuku asked. Mina leaned against him, returning to the position she had been in before they had started talking. He quickly responded by doing the same. Let's just stay here a while, she suggested, smiling as he rested his head on hers. Sounds good. They stayed that for about five minutes, neither saying a word. Suddenly, Izuku felt Mina shift her weight, turning her head slightly. His eyes threatened to pop out of his head when he felt her lips gently press against his cheek. Mina the now tomato faced Izuku yelped. Who that was? Des felt that it make a kinda official, you know Mina murmured, squeezing his hand. Izuku took several minutes to process that yes, Mina had just kissed him. He debated what to do for several more. Eventually, Mina felt a similar shift as Izuku moved, and her face lit up as she felt the sensation of lips pecking against her cheek. Izuku. Mina. They reached across with their outside arms, so that they were now holding both hands between themselves. Cuddling against each other, they spent another good hour just watching the sunset together. It was, for them, a perfect moment. A chocolate your rocket yawned as she finished packing her things. It had been a fun yet tiring day of activity at the beach, and she was ready to head home. She had spent the afternoon with a few friends from class, including Iida, Tur, Sai, and Kaminari. She woke up to the aforementioned class rep as he was also finishing gathering his belongings. This sure was fun, Haida she asked, smiling at a classmate. Indeed. We ought to do this again before our break ends. He paused. Perhaps next time Midoriya and Ishida won't be too busy studying to join us. Yuraka froze as he said this. Sorry, what did you say both of her friends had mentioned they had plans and couldn't come to the beach, but they hadn't specifically mentioned what? Ishido and Midoriya. I ran into them at the park while I was on my afternoon run. They were in the middle of studying together, though, so I didn't want to disturb them for very long. He hoisted a bag over his shoulder. I admired their commitment to their education, though it would be nice for them to join us next time we did this. Iraka stared blankly at the sand as Ida began to walk off. For some reason, her stomach felt like a knot that was being tightened. What were they doing together on their own? Why didn't they tell her that's what they were doing? And why did it bother her so much? Yuraka are you coming? Iida's voice got her attention. She shook her head quickly, disregarding the bizarre sensation she just felt, and looked up. Yep just was making sure I didn't forget anything. She started after Iida, trying to forget whatever those thoughts just now were. Thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to like share, subscribe and comment below your favorite part. Don't forget to support Acidic Affection by 12 Angryman and his story link in the description. See you in the next video. Sayonara.